In the last 20 years, the Detroit Lions have three playoff appearances. They've lost in the wild card every time. They have two seasons of double digit wins, 11 seasons of five or fewer wins. And if you include interim head coaches, they've had nine different head coaches. So obviously things have not been great for the Lions over the past 20 years, but you can stretch it even further back and they really haven't been good since the 50s when they were winning NFL championships, courtesy of Texas legend Bobby Lane. But you guys are clicking on this video, which means you're already a football fan. You know the Lions have sucked. So what am I gonna do? Over the next 20 seasons, I'm gonna rebuild the Lions and try to make them as dominant as possible by any means necessary. And since I know a lot of you guys are gonna watch this, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you can use code BANGLE on SeatGeek to save yourself $20 when you buy tickets for anything. I have so many of you that tweet me on Twitter, of course, link is down below, and they say, hey, I want to go to a game. I forget what your code is, which is, it's just BANGLE. It's just the name of the channel. Uh, but yeah, save yourself $20. You're going to go to a concert, football game, baseball, basketball, whatever. Use code BANGLE and save $20. And that is, of course, on SeatGeek. It's an app online. I don't know. You got it. Quick overview of the team. We got some good young talent at receiver. It's kind of weird to me that DJ Chark doesn't have star dev. Like he is a little bit injury prone, but he's also like a really good young receiver and very productive when he's healthy. I'm in Ross St. Brown. He's also just good and young. He only had 86 speed last year and only 87 speed this year. So it's going to make him a little bit less viable if you're actually playing the games. But in simulation, I think he's going to be fine and a good option for us. But the big one, I'm really excited about is Jamison Williams. Game-breaking speed. He is a home run waiting to happen, and they gave him 98 speed, and I think it's fair. I really think it's fair. He is so fast and should be a beast for us. Future wide receiver one for this Lions team. Also, of course, have TJ Hawkinson. This was my main franchise team last year, if you guys watched that series, so I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the players on this team. They haven't really made many big changes. The only weird part about this for me is just seeing, you know, none of the guys I drafted in my Lions franchise, but the line looks awesome. Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, Taylor Decker, Panay Sewell obviously has a ton of potential. DeAndre Swift is a beast, but yeah, the goofball, Jared Goff, we're going to have to upgrade a quarterback probably in the draft. And then defensively, we have Tracy Walker and Deshaun Elliott, hook him horns, Deshaun Elliott at strong safety corners, Mike Hughes, Imani Orwarie, and the former first round pick, Jeff Okuda. D-line, Romeo Aquara, Giants legend, Aiden Hutchinson, Michael Brockers, Ali McNeil, Levi Anzarike, Charles Harris, Julian Aquara, and the linebackers, not great. Sean Dion Hamilton, Derek Barnes, Alex Anzalone, and Jared Davis. Do we have the rookie Malcolm Rodriguez from Oklahoma State? He could end up being okay, but I already don't like the 3-4. I want Aiden Hutchinson rushing the passer. I don't know why he would be at right end if this is a 3-4. But we're obviously going to talk a little bit about the number two overall pick, Aiden Hutchinson. Obviously, quite a bit of potential. His short arms could be a bit of a problem. It's really, really important for defensive linemen, especially pass rushers, like who are going to be dominant. You got to be able to make first contact. And that's really not something he's able to do just because of the deficiency uh, with his arm length. But he is a really, really good athlete explosive, and I think he's going to be productive regardless. Josh Pascal is also a really interesting player. He was a pretty highly uh, thought of recruit, I want to say, uh, in his recruiting class. I think he's from Maryland. I think he was a top five player in Maryland that year. Kind of a weird thing to remember slash know, but I, I think I was looking at it recently. So uh, anyway, it's not super relevant. I'll play him at right outside linebacker. And I don't know how much he's going to play in year one, but I'd like to develop Josh Pascal. He's a good player. Uh, only a 67 overall at that position, but I'm going to start him anyway. Derek Barnes, I think, could be quite good too. Three and three at the midseason mark. These seasons are going to go pretty quickly because we have to get 20 of them in, and I want this video to be six hours. You can probably tell it's a pretty long video already. I'm not sure how long it is, obviously, because I've only been recording for 16 minutes. And we've got some tough decisions to make regarding which players we're going to bring back. I think a lot of these guys we're just going to let walk. They're not going to be impact players for us, but Amani Warawarie, Deshaun Elliott, I definitely want to bring back Mike Hughes, I would say as well. Jack Fox, I would say as well. He'll be my punter for maybe the entire video, to be honest. And then DJ Chark. DJ Chark, I could see returning. I'd like for him to get star dev. It might be more worthwhile to just see what's going on in free agency. He's like fairly cheap though. Gave Jack Fox a seven year deal. Not going to spend too long. Just going to bring back some guys and uh, I'll, I'll let you know. 
five-year deal for Amani Warrior. I want to keep in mind, we just got to keep like the younger good players still on the team. But Deshaun Elliott was the only one who just wants more money. And then DJ Chark. I just like, I think we can do better. And if we're guaranteed to keep Jamison Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown, I would rather do better than DJ Chark, I think. So he's good, but we'll, uh, we'll let him walk. And we actually played pretty well. Went nine and eight. So a lot better than I really expected this team to do. And I think a lot better than they're expected to do in real life. And Jared Goff, I suppose, is a big reason why. Had a career year, over 5,000 yards passing with 42 touchdowns to only 14 interceptions. DeAndre Swift wasn't too impactful, but I guess we're a pass-first offense. And guys like Jamison Williams are the reason why. 92 catches for nearly 1,400 yards and four touchdowns as a rookie. But as you work down the list, the touchdowns get higher and higher and higher. Hawk with nine. Amon Ross St. Brown with 11. 14 for DJ Chark, who eclipsed 1,000 yards as well, although he'll still probably end up walking. Any notable numbers in here? Didn't really get a ton of pressure. Charles Harris had eight sacks. Aiden Hutchinson didn't really get too many, but I don't know if he was our rush end. I forgot to check that. Four picks for Jeff Okuda, though. It'd be nice to see him turn his career around. He's been off to a bit of a rough start in real life. We'll have to see how 2022 goes, of course. The season has not started yet as I record this. Still has potential, but athleticism for him could be his downfall. Now, Aiden Hutchinson was a rush right end. I guess I did remember to do it. So that's good, but he just wasn't really productive, which is one of the biggest reasons why I'm ultimately going to just change to a 4-3. I think it's a little bit more consistent in simulation, and it's not always. Like, you can still get sack production in a 3-4 in Madden Sim. Just It's more consistent, I would say, in a 4-3, and Chiefs playbook is really, I mean, usually the best one to do. We'll do, of course auto-generated rookies. Damn, Demarcus Lawrence broke the record for sacks in a year with 27. Very, very productive season. As we will see who wins the Super Bowl, it's Broncos Cardinals, the battle of the sub six foot quarterbacks. And Russell Wilson comes out on top over Kyler Murray, the taller QB wins. Trevor Lawrence won MVP as Doug Peterson wins Coach of the Year with the Jags. Christian McCaffrey, Offensive Player of the Year. Demarcus Lawrence is your Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Garrett Wilson with the Jets. And Defensive Rookie of the Year is Devin Lloyd with the Jags. Man, Jags taking away everything here. Deshaun Elliott has more interest now. Oh, because we're a playoff contender. So I could probably offer him the same contract. I want it to be a long-term deal. He's really good. And he should accept this, yes. Deshaun Elliott is back. When you have that age plus production uh, or plus development trait, they're going to be worthwhile to bring back. For DJ Chark, like I would give him a contract, but it would have to be really cheap. He's going to decline this anyway, which again, we talked about it. I'm not really too mad about that. Sean Dion Hamilton's up to star dev. He's not coming back though. And Jamison Williams. Did he go up to superstar dev? Yes, because he won offensive rookie of the year. He is up to superstar. We'll give him deep threat, of course, which is kind of like, how is that not his archetype already? That's literally his game. He's the biggest deep threat you could even imagine. TJ Hawkinson up to superstar dev. Jared Goff up to star dev. I'll trade him. I don't care if it's unrealistic. I will trade him all day. If I can somehow finagle a first round pick for Jared Goff, whew, I will not hesitate. And that begs the question, why am I screaming? That's, that's a decent question. Ooh, Quentin Nelson's here. That's my starter at left guard, and then we can move Jonah Jackson over to the right side. He's got big-time interest. He's a really good player. He's really young, and this will definitely help us run the football. So let's give him, let's give him I mean, a six-year contract. That'll work. I'm just trying to offer super long-term contracts to guys that I know I want long-term that are going to be the, like, the centerpieces, if you will, of this rebuild. And it's also nice because this is such a long-term rebuild. In the draft, I'm just going to take the best player every time, pretty much. And we'll figure out the other pieces as we go. But it's going to be really important to just go, hey, best player available, best player available, best player available. Just build the team. And I signed Quentin Nelson and Tremaine Edmonds. Big day. Big day for us. I would love for there to be some good quarterbacks in this class because I'm trying to get rid of... Uh, Jared Goofball any way I can. Ross Casey could be the guy. He looks like he could be pretty good. 
good deep accuracy, decent arm, real good athleticism. Will Thurman could be even better. And this running back ran 4-2-5. Elite acceleration, elite agility. What are we doing here? Am I going to take a running back? Yeah, I probably am. This guy looks sick. Okay, it's actually going to be really tough to get the players I want. Benji Rhodes was a player I was going to make uh, one of the focus guys. I'm like, he looks really good. Well, you know why? Because he's the number one ranked player in the entire class. And then the running back, they're like, we know he's really good. If you want him, spend a top five pick. And I don't want to do that. But I also, I do. Like, we have DeAndre Swift. This guy also looks disgusting. What? How do I get everybody? Do I just start the rebuild off by by multiple top picks? And <laughs> uh, Ross Casey's round two to three talent, by the way. So is Will Thurman. So I'm not taking a quarterback. NFL draft time. We pick at number 13. I wish I ch checked out the uh, the mock draft. That would have been nice. But like, oof. how do I miss out on some of these guys? They look so good. Like a power rusher with a finesse moves. That's this good of an athlete. I'm going to I'm going to get so crazy to start this 20 year rebuild you have no idea. This defensive lineman, B finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle, very good athlete as well. This draft class is starting out stacked. But I can't get everybody. The safety looks awesome. He really really does. Really looks awesome and that's my free safety of the future potentially. He looks insane. But then the real challenging question becomes, okay, how do I draft the defensive end, the running back, the safety, plus I did like an outside linebacker as well. Uh, is he a left outside linebacker? Yes. Andrew Jenkins, he has a round one to two talent, which is where he's projected to go anyway, but looks very, very good. Very good athlete. How do I get everybody? I can't, which is why I have to wave the allure of Jared Goff in the face of some team. So we have 13 and 16 right now. I gotta move up. Goff, former number one overall pick, man. Vikings, they can't even come close to affording him. I can't believe I'm gonna do this. I am gonna trade Jared Goff to my favorite team, the Giants. Now we can't just get a first round pick number 20 straight up, which is good because it's Jared Goff but I should be, be, be able to add some things in here to make it happen. What about a four and a five? What about a three and a four? I'd be willing to do that all day, all day. Very close. Okay, so Jared Goff and two third round picks. I really didn't wanna to have to give that up, but a third rounder this year and next year gets me number 20. And now it's still about moving up to number one because these guys just look so amazing. I can't let the Vikings get Benji Rhodes. They're a fit. They should and they probably will take him. He's going to have A power moves, A finesse moves, which is why I just I can't I can't let the Vikings get him. Yes, interdivisional trade, but we've seen the Vikings and Lions trade before in the first round. As far back as oh, a few months ago, several months ago, whenever the draft was, late April. So, I'm going to do it. Now, I would have tried to add Jared Goff to this deal. However, the Vikings very much could not afford it. It's going to take multiple first round picks to get this done. We're projected at the number two overall pick next year, though. That is huge. That's really, really going to help us out with this. So it's a future number two overall projected and two fours for the number one pick. It would take more than that in real life, but this had to be done. And I, I want the running back because the running back is going to be so unreal. I know it's crazy to take a running back so high, and maybe I don't, but guys, when you can get someone B ball carry vision, B break tackle, A carrying, that's that's cool. Elite acceleration and agility and speed. He ran 427 at the combine, 425 at his pro day. The player is just gonna be so good with B trucking, so well rounded. I'm not gonna take him at number one overall. This isn't 1980. I am gonna take Benji Rhodes. And then I'll figure it out. What are his team fits? Dolphins, Eagles, Jets. So he probably won't go before those teams are up. I'm taking Benji Rose, number one overall. Unreal pass rusher. Welcome to Detroit. Does have hidden dev. 89 strength. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, by the way? <laughs> the top left. Who is this guy? Who do we just draft? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. Uh, but this player is really good. He would fit the 3-4 really well. 6'3", 272, only 21 years old. It had to happen. Um, that's Benjamin Rhodes. I don't know who we just took. Dolphins, Eagles, Jets. The defensive tackle looks awesome, too. I really would also like the safety. I think this is one of the most insane draft classes I've probably ever seen. It's shaping up to be. So I don't, I don't want to wait until next year. Because those players are not going to be available. Texans take the defensive tackle. Titans go with a quarterback. Seahawks take a right tackle, and this is my move-up spot. So I have the problem of not having a quarterback right now. We're going to figure that out. Uh, how do I even move up, dude? Okay, I know this is unrealistic. I just, again, I have to, I have to work out a way to get these insane players. If they're not as good as I expected, all right, fine, that's on me. But they look like some of the best players I've seen in Madden 23 franchise so far. I'm trading Taylor Decker. He is an 82 overall. He's 29 with star dev. He's a good player. I'm trading a first round pick number 16 overall, a fifth rounder for number five, a safety to make the contracts work, and then uh, a fourth rounder this year as well. A lot's going on. I no longer have probably the two most valuable positions on offense in quarterback and left tackle. And I'm going to Dave Gettleman it and take a running back super high. I think. Kirk Jackson is interest from Dolphins, Eagles. I think I have to take back-to-back -back picks here. I'm going with the free safety first. And we do have Tracy Walker, but this dude is just, again, unreal. You don't find this type of speed and just general athleticism at safety with pretty decent skills as well. I have to take him. Bernard Watford, welcome to the Lions. 94 speed, 94 acceleration, good agility, change of direction, jumping. Again, it just had to be done. The way I see it, I just had to get crazy this first year to set us up completely for the future. I, I, I know how wild this is. Trust me, it's not lost on me. I get it. This trade, I'm trading number 13. Hal Vitae to get the contract off the books for me, pretty much. I'm trading a second round pick, number 48, for number six and a four. Again, I, the craziness is not lost on me. This would be a wild real draft for the Lions to have three picks inside the top six. We've seen two as far back as, oh, last year. We had, uh, we had the Giants who had five and then seven ended up being. So I guess technically it's not in the top six. It's in the top seven. But uh, I'm taking the running back, Kirk Jackson. I know taking a running back this high is crazy. But this is just the best running back I've seen, I think, in Madden franchise so far. I'm taking him. 97 speed. 94 acceleration, 96 agility, 90 change of direction, 72 strength feels pretty good as well. Again, had to be done. Okay, so I've gone absolutely nuclear. It's It's been a wild draft. So clearly when I started and said by any means necessary, I wasn't kidding. I didn't know it was going to get this unrealistic. Three top 10 picks, and then we have one at 20 coming up. But uh, here we are. There goes a quarterback, Will Thurman, who we know is a two to three round value, but that could still be a 73, 74 overall, uh, which isn't so bad. Andrew Jenkins isn't supposed to go for 17 picks, and that's kind of the player I want right now. So I'm actually, I'm trying to recoup a little bit of value here. And I think the team that gives me the best chance to get who I want, while still, I honestly blacked out. I don't remember what I said, uh, but the team that gives me the best value in trading down, plus still getting the player I want, is the Packers. So more interdivisional trading here, trading down to 27, but I'm picking up a second round pick as well, which I'll turn into a future pick uh, almost assuredly. Actually, I'm gonna trade down again. Jaguars are giving me a third round pick to move down two spots. I'm gonna do it. Hopefully my player doesn't go off the board. He shouldn't, but you never know. There goes a left tackle and the Colts take a right guard. Not gonna risk it anymore. I'm taking who I want. Andrew Jenkins. Welcome to Detroit. Great athlete, college, Michigan. It's a match made in heaven. Former Aiden Hutchinson teammate. Not really, but like, you know. Fun storyline for us. Keep the Michigan guy in Michigan. 87 speed, 88 acceleration with hidden dev as well. We're having an unbelievable draft and we should be. We've had four first round picks. Four top 29 picks. I get it. It's insane. And this is why I got these picks. So I can trade down for 2024 picks. 
Vikings, no. Rams. Rams is going to be the one because the Rams would have to stay good and given their cap space and their aging talent, they might not stay good. So even though these are projected to be super late picks, I'm going to gamble on the fact that they might not be. Niners offering me a, a third and a six next year. I want to make it happen. Why would this be the Falcons offer? They're, hey, do you just want to move down just to be nice? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, draft recap, moment of truth. Was it all worth it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was. It definitely was. You're just not going to see a draft class like this. Obviously, we had multiple, multiple, multiple top picks. But to get 380 pluses in an 85, even in the same draft class, let alone on the same team, is just insane. Now, elephant in the room, we don't have a quarterback. We don't have a left tackle. These are big problems. I, I might just slide Quentin Nelson over and just say, you handle it. But, I mean, look at this. 85, 80, 80. Already wild to get in the same draft. 79, the defensive tackle was quite good. The other free safety was quite good as well. It was just a really good draft class. But uh, yeah, it was absolutely worth it to move up. He'll be a guaranteed superstar X Factor. This is a generational draft pick. Guaranteed superstar X Factor. I'm sorry, DeAndre Swift. It had to be done. He is unbelievable. He should be generational. I'm a little bit worried because Juke and Spin and stuff aren't that high, especially Juke. He's just well-balanced. So I guess there is like a really small chance that he's just a super uh, like high-generated player. So with the Madden 23 generators, they have generational, and then they have a tier under that, which is the just super high generator. I don't know exactly what it's called. And I guess there's a chance he's that, but I don't think so. I think he's going to be generational. Now, these guys should be like the very top high generated guys with the chance to be um, superstar X Factor still. 83 speed, 83 power moves, 80 finesse move. Another awesome player. Now, his face is just so it's different from what it actually was. All right, so we changed that. That's a little bit better just because uh, like his actual profile to start. He came out like Pacific Islander. Doesn't really matter, but um, it just for the sake of keeping everything uh, kind of the way it, it looked at the start, we're gonna go ahead and make that change. What 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 is what am I thinking of? What is a word? Just really for the sake of consistency. But this is another disgusting prospect. 94 speed and acceleration with 80 zone coverage, 83 hit power. <laughs> like this draft class is just insane. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep DeAndre Swift. I think. I think that's the right move. We're going to run the ball a lot, I guess, this year. Our running back is going to be so, so good. Can he catch the ball? Only 74 receiving back. Yeah, he can't really catch. I'm going to kick Quentin Nelson out to left tackle. I think it's kind of like that same scenario where Zach Martin played tackle for the Cowboys for a little while uh, when he had to. Still a great offensive lineman. He's just one of those guys that can just do it all. So right guard's not going to be great right now. I'm going to work on getting another offensive lineman. We might just sign like a bridge player. But, God, dude, I mean, we just, we had to do what we did, is kind of the way I'll rationalize that. So Jenkins is going to move to inside linebacker, where he fits a little bit better. And then Rhodes is a perfect 3-4 defensive end. He'll probably be a rush defensive tackle for me. His block shedding is pretty good, too. I think if I were to move to a 4-3, I think he stays at defensive tackle. Charles Harris, I, I'm going to keep, I guess. Hutchinson, Pascal. I could, I could move one of these guys back to outside linebacker. Romeo Aquara could be the one. Yeah, I think he will be, actually. I mean, honestly, if I change things up quite a bit, Benji Rhodes, I mean, he could play outside linebacker. I, he's just one of those guys who looks unbelievable. I could see him playing 3-4 outside linebacker, 4-3 defensive end, and even 4-3 defensive tackle. Okay, free agency here. DJ Chark is unsigned. All right, DJ, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to Detroit. And the quarterback choices are not great. I'm going to sign Andy Dalton. He's the top-rated quarterback. If Jared Goff can have a career year, hell, I mean, maybe he can as well. And I'll sign Nick Foles as well. He might be the difference between winning a Super Bowl and not. I'm also going to sign the doctor, Laurent Duvernay-Tardif. He'll start at right guard and... 
now things are starting to come together a little bit more. There are notable weaknesses on the team. By trading Goff, I kind of uh, tore it down a little bit. Taylor Decker as well. I think we're going to be better long term, but we're certainly not going to be better this year as a result of the trades I've made. I mean, the running back's insane. I just had to draft them. And then defensively, I think we got some really, really good players. Still not entirely sure how I want to order everything, but I, I think I think we have it in a good spot. Who are you? Pritchett. Dalton Pritchett. We also drafted a star dev, I'm assuming star dev, almost certainly, uh, running back down the board. So good pick, I guess. He'll play over uh, Jefferson here. He was pretty good at uh, Oregon State. Seventh round pick. We'll see what happens with him. We are getting trade offers for DeAndre Swift. I don't really want to trade him. Yeah, and I'm not going to. So this is interesting. The top players in this class, it's like it knows what we need. Tackles and then a couple of quarterbacks. I like that. A lot of tackles, though. Hopefully they're actually good so I can draft one. But I don't have a first round pick. That's right. Two seconds, two thirds, two fourths. We have a, you know, we've done a good job getting kind of these middle of the pack things, but like, is there any way I can get a first? Tracy Walker, man, that contract is not good for me. I would also trade Charles Harris if I can, because we have Josh Pascal that can just play outside linebacker. So I would do that. And then Aquara can move back down or I could move Pascal down to defensive end. So if I can get a first round pick from the Bears, I would add a, a second round pick to get it done too. Hopefully, it's there's no way this is accepted even with a second. Okay, trading Charles Harris, Tracy Walker, and a fourth for a backup center and a first from the Raiders. I just wanted a first round pick and Charles Harris is not important anymore and also old, not gonna be developing anymore. Tracy Walker, we got a better younger guy. So I've moved Josh Pascal down to left end. We got Rhodes at right end. Hutch, Aquara are gonna stay at outside linebacker. And then specialist, how do I wanna handle this? Pascal is a rush D tackle is interesting. Aquara doesn't really need to play. Rhodes and Hutchinson as rush ends. I don't mind that. I think that's what we're gonna do. You know, I actually don't mind quarterback receiver at tier three, but interior offensive line outside linebacker, that I don't need. Defensive end running back, don't need. I would actually prefer defensive tackle, offensive tackle. No, I wouldn't. No, I, never mind. Forget that. Okay, one and six. Not great, admittedly. Seems like a strength of the class is wide receiver. And um, all right, we'll, we'll set it to wide receiver then. Don't see quarterback in the strengths, which is a little bit annoying, but... Um, there still could be a good one. Ooh, some big time free agents. Maybe I should trade DeAndre Swift. I'm not going to though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend him, yeah. Uh, I'm going to extend TJ Hawkinson as well. He'd like to come back and I will give you a huge contract. DeAndre Swift doesn't really uh, want that much. I could just take it down just a little bit. I mean, a four year contract for backup running back. He's back. It may end up being the wrong decision, but it's the decision that I'm making. Jeff Okuda here as well. Romeo Aquara. Since we're one in six, I might just try and trade him. I do want to bring back Jeff Okuda though. He's not very interested. If he declines this, he's getting traded. Well, he declined it. I'll, I'll do... Am I at the last week I can trade? Aquara is not too expensive though. <laughs> But he, I should just, I should just sell. All right, Aquara is back. Two-year deal. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to trade him. But Okuda, Okuda's just young and still pretty good. All right, he's going to be back. Okay, Jeff Okuda back long term. The temptation to just keep Quentin Nelson at left tackle, by the way, is overwhelming. I, he's just so good. We're paying him like a guard. Might have to keep him there. Well, we finished three and 14. Uh, really bad time to not have your first round pick. That's uh, really, really unfortunate. But Andy Dalton really held us back. Kirk Jackson had a good season. 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns, averaging 4.3 per carry. It's not even a surprise. I'm not even shocked that he has superstar X Factor. Like he was going to. He's also a 90, by the way, at this point. That's right. He's a 90 during his rookie season. 
receiving. Good seasons for my top guys. Hopefully, Jamison Williams even flirts with superstar X Factor at some point. And I'd love for Amon Ross St. Brown to go to superstar, but shouldn't be much to look at here on offense. Defensively, though, Andrew Jenkins, show me superstar. Star. But with a good year, maybe he goes up to superstar dev for winning defensive rookie of the year. He had a pretty good year. Nine tackles for loss and a pick. It's possible. Aiden Hutchinson got a little bit better with eight sacks as did it Josh Paschal, but look at that 10 and a half sacks for the rookie Benji Rhodes out of Auburn. He has only star development. Very sad. What about the free safety? He had 80 tackles and a pick. Mike Hughes had four interceptions, which led the team. Show me something good. Only star. Oh, they were just super high value guys. Super high generated guys. I mean, still good, but Unfortunate to not at least get superstar with one of those guys. Not having a quarterback really, really, really held us back. Battle of Florida. Bucks beat the Jags in the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts wins MVP. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. Christian McCaffrey, Offensive Player of the Year. The Bucks quarterback, Will Thurman, not only won Offensive Rookie of the Year, he won the Super Bowl as a rookie. It's the only time that's ever happened for a starter. Julian Thompson with the Chiefs is your Defensive Rookie of the Year, and Shaq Barrett wins Super Bowl MVP. Benji Rhodes, did you go up to Superstar? Please. He did. All right, there we go. He won Defensive Rookie of the Year, I guess, for the NFC. We do have a lot of money. $109 million. I don't want to spend all of it because it's going to catch up to us really, really quickly with some of these contracts that we've been handing out. We've been handing out long-term deals. They get really expensive over time. So we have to manage it in a really good way. But at the same time, I really need a quarterback if there's a good quarterback in free agency, it's going to be something I consider. And Justin Herbert is here. Okay. That's going to be really tough to say no to. So, I mean, pretty much every single player in here has no interest at all in the Lions, which I get. I mean, we're coming off a really, really bad season. Ed Oliver is an interesting shout. Might offer him. So I'm in the process of changing my scheme to try and get more effective on offense, and that has actually increased Justin Herbert's interest significantly. He's so good. He's going to be really, really expensive, but it's so obviously worth it because of his talent that I have to at least offer him. And we're actually out to a commanding lead over the Chargers. I'm going to rework it a little bit and try to save some money. And let's see what happens. Players have evaluated offers. Herbert is off the board because he is a Detroit Lion. So is Ed Oliver. And I really have to stop spending money because we're going to be done. Getting Justin Herbert is massive. I was thinking about drafting a quarterback, but obviously when you see one of the best in the league and as young as he is, it was an, it was an absolute no brainer. Had to be done. So this has been, I mean, a super crazy rebuild to start. I mean, yeah. Realism probably not a focus. Are the Lions going out and signing Justin Herbert out of free agency? Maybe this ends up being, you know, wrong in a few years, but I don't think so. And you know what? I think I think Justin Herbert is a way better option than anybody that was in the draft. I mean, Justin Sherman looks pretty good, but Justin Herbert, I think, is uh, probably going to be better for us. I mean, he looks like a good player. Medium accuracy is a little bit scary. But really good athlete, great throw power, good accuracy, probably a good player. This dude's name is just Joe Mixon. Nice. Wow, look at this dude. Projected round one to two, true talent is undrafted. And yeah, you should be able to tell that he looks, he looks like shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Holy, sh this guy looks awful. And he's a top fit for us? No, 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 please, no thank you. This dude was looking pretty good, except he's just kind of slow, but I would still consider drafting a receiver. We need a good third one. Can't just keep signing DJ Chark. Ooh, we have potential here with Mike Dorsey. We have big time potential. He's he's worth a shot. And this is going to be in our draft range too. So many slot receivers in here with A catch and traffic and A catching. Obviously it's like, that's all they can do. Like no route running at all down the field. There's just a, a true slot archetype. Even Ronnie Brown here out of Auburn. Ronnie Brown out of Auburn. Where have I seen that before? Oh, the literally Ronnie Brown who went to Auburn, the running back. Uh, he's interesting, pure deep threat, 
cannot catch even a little bit. Lamar Edwards down the board has potential. Speed rush, defensive tackle with B block shed, B tackling. Very good athlete, strong enough. Could be good value down the board. You know, I still, I really don't like any of the offensive linemen I see. I, I don't know that I've ever even seen one that I'm like, man, I got to draft that guy. And I would, I really would. If there was an offensive lineman that was like, you know, actually one of the best players in the class, I would actually draft them. But every time we see them, they're like, eh, he's whatever. He's okay. Like elite speed and good strength is intriguing, but B to D pass block and run block, it's like, I don't think I can ever draft that player, especially not high in the draft. I would never, ever, ever. No way. Yeah, I don't actually love the class. Maybe if we were ever not going to have a first round pick, maybe this would the or be the year to not have one. Fifth year options? Um, no. Like, we're just going to go ahead and and give him a, an actual long-term contract for Panay Sewell. I won't, like, pick up the fifth-year option so we can do it when he's better. So we actually end up having the uh, seventh pick in the draft. Hmm. How does that work out? I guess whoever we uh, traded with, I can't remember now. I think it was the Raiders. I guess they ended up being pretty bad, which works for me. I'm going to check out some of these offensive tackles, or at least Sean Florence. I really don't know how I'm going to play the draft here. I really don't. Pick at number seven overall. I'm not overwhelmed with the talent. I think there's a chance we trade down for a first next year. Sean Florence, true talent, is round two to three. So, pass. The center I looked at, I got up to 90% completion. Colin Larson. He looks good. I'm not going to take him at number seven, but he definitely looks pretty good. I mean, do I? I think if I trade down to like 15 or something and he's still available, I'd consider it. And then we have this receiver. He is around one talent, so that's good. Just not going to be a top five player. Really, really good speed. And then skills wise, he's definitely good, not elite, but a good deep threat. I would be okay with him. Mike Dorsey. All right, at number seven, this is when we start to uh, trade down. We pick at the top of the second round. The Vikings are offering potentially number one next year. Bucks are offering me two first round picks. I don't know why 2025 round one would be projected to be number 14 when they just won the Super Bowl. Doesn't really check out to me. I'm going to trade with the Packers again. I mean, this is crazy, but they're offering me a first this year and next year. I cannot turn that down. All right, if the center is available, this is going to be a really tough decision. If not, I'll probably just end up taking the receiver. The center is still on the board. I don't know his true talent within the class, but this would be really helpful for my offensive line. He's only got solid and decent for speed and strength, which concerns me a little bit, but he looks pretty good overall. And then skills wise, everything except for his finesse game is elite. I'm going to take Colin Larson. Does have hidden dev, not strong. So uh, he's 6'5", 318 though. I could move him to guard, or I could move Frank Ragnow to guard, which I might prefer. We'll see. The receiver I want is still available, but the question becomes, does he make it to the top of the second round? I'm going to say he probably doesn't. Just really hoping these receivers stay on the board. That's what's going to keep him not getting drafted. If the receivers in front of him stay on the board for as long as possible, it's looking good. It's looking really good right now. And there he goes, Mike Dorsey at number 30. Ah, Cardinals got a good one. Cardinals got a real good one. I should have just moved up. So here we are, top of the second round. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna regret uh, not moving up for that receiver, but I wanna see. So I might consider taking another offensive lineman here, just so we have a little bit of, a, of an option. Chamberlain is an elite pass protector. Really, really, really good. Uh, doesn't really do anything else all that well. He's average at best, but really good pass protector. So is Joshua Burbank down the board, though. A pass block, also can't run block. I probably prefer the other one. And that defensive tackle should be on the board by my next pick. I'm going to turn this pick into a first next year. 
That's the smartest thing to do. And only one team's offering me a first next year. It's the Colts. And I'm going to bet on the fact that they don't win the Super Bowl. And, uh, I mean, either way, I think that makes sense, though. Okay, the defensive tackle still should be available. And he is. Lamar Edwards not going to let this one stay on the board. His block shedding is just pretty good already. And with elite finesse moves, I think the player is going to end up being really solid for us. Only normal development, unfortunately. But... I think that's going to be a good pick. Trading two threes this year for a second from the Chargers, who no longer have Justin Herbert, because we have him. Larson's a 74. Edwards is a 72. We got a decent re uh, receiver down the board uh, on my draft board. One of those slot guys, Austin Frazier, was a 73. So he'll be like that classic slot receiver. Now, tell me, how bad of a miss is this? There was a good receiver down the board, Felix Baker. Normal dev. I don't really even think I looked at this guy because he's slow. I wouldn't I wouldn't look at an 88 speed guy. Just wouldn't. Mike Dorsey was a 75 with hidden dev. 98 speed. 98 acceleration. Yeah, all pretty good. <laughs> What's his dev trait? Yeah, put me in pain, please. What is his dev trait? Is it star? Okay. I can live with that at least, but yeah. Uh, unfortunate to miss that. Oh, and Frazier actually has star or better development. That's interesting. All right, maybe not that bad of a pick after all. That's okay. He's playing up to a 74 overall with morale. Not too much, but that's pretty good. Larson also, we know, has star dev, so I don't even know why I consider drafting the other guy if we know that this guy's gonna have star dev, maybe even superstar, but probably star. And, um, I guess just to keep Frank Ragnow where he's been successful... I'll move this rookie over to right guard. Makes a little bit more sense just for any interior offensive lineman. If you've been playing center for a while, leave him at center. And Larson actually goes up to a 76 overall at right guard. I like that. Strength is just a little bit low, but that's a good fit. Also have a star dev corner down the board. Again, I'm assuming star dev because it's just unlikely to be anything else. Very bad in coverage, but I mean, maybe there's something there. And a star, how many star dev rookies do we have? They're all bad, but down the board, we drafted great. Okay. Two and five. With the 93 overall offense. You're killing me. Uh, we could potentially get Justin Herbert to superstar X Factor, though. That'd be pretty sweet. Also, I didn't notice till just now, but Josh Pascal has star development. So now, like. How much different is he than Aiden Hutchinson in-game? Not significantly worse. He's a 78. Aiden Hutchinson is what, like maybe an 82? 84? All right, well, all right, you get whatever. <laughs> you get my point. Okay, so we don't really have that many expiring contracts. It's the Panay Sewell draft class. I want to bring back Amon Ross St. Brown and Panay Sewell, and that's probably it. We will need a kicker. Jason Myers isn't really doing it for me at a 71 overall. So I'll try to upgrade on him. Do you want to keep Amon Ra St. Brown around? And uh, yeah, that contract seems reasonable. He wants more money. Okay. And Panay Sewell also wants more money. Okay, does Justin Herbert get Superstar X Factor? Well, we lost 28-10. We had 10 points, so definitely not. Okay, more money for Sewell. Dude, how much do you want? St. Brown just gonna just straight up test free agency. Okay, all right. We're in five and twelve. Don't really like that. This dude Will Thurman is going off with the Bucks. Maybe we should be in Bucks playbook because that dude is breaking records. Herbert, it's like not great, honestly, for like a ninety-five overall. Kirk Jackson really didn't get enough touches, in my opinion. Jamison Williams went off, 12 touchdowns for the rookie Austin Frazier in the slot. We need to figure out what to do here on offense to be successful because it's not working, whatever we're doing. And defensively, we're, we're having a full overhaul. I'm done. We're having a full, complete overhaul. Bills beat the Panthers, and Will Thurman wins NFL MVP. Justin Sherman, the rookie, quarterback for the Eagles, wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. But nothing super new in there. It just seems like the Jags are unbelievable under Doug Peterson, who won another coach of the year. So St. Brown is just straight up done. He's going to test free agency. I really would like for him to not. And then Panay Sewell. Yeah, man. Like, he's rejected a couple times. We're going to have to give him, like, 
an overpay. It's going to have to be a, a severe overpay. But we really need him. So I'm going to offer him... Ah, he's going to test free agency. He's going to get franchise tagged. 20 mil, it's so much. But he's got to get tagged. Rashawn Gary, back in free agency. New Jersey guy, but went to Michigan. And, um, I mean... We could use a receiver. Sure could. I would like it to be Amon Ross St. Brown. I would. Seems like he's got some interest. So we'll try to figure something out that he's comfortable with. And that seems like a really, really good offer. I'm going to take the money down a little bit and see if he just flat out signs. He's signed. All right, we're cool. And we also got Daniel Carlson for seven years. Seven-year contract for a kicker. Only in Madden franchise. Well, a lot of quarterbacks at the top per usual. Some tackles as well. But three quarterbacks in that top group followed up by four offensive tackles after a linebacker. This receiver can fly. Not great catching traffic. Okay, private workouts. I don't know. We have a top five pick. Don't really know if I'll spend it. We have a lot of first round picks actually, come to think of it. So we pick at number five overall and 23. I think we have maybe even another one after that. And Terrence Lockhart here. Terrence Lockhart is a top five talent in the draft. And with elite speed, that surely will be my pick. Yeah. I also got to 90% of this tight end because he looked pretty good. I might end up drafting this guy in the first round. Looks like he'd be a really, really good backup. Good blocking as well. At least good pass blocking. But I'm going to take this receiver. Top five talent in the class. He is already 23, which I don't love, but he'll be good for a few years for us. 98 speed. Hidden dev. Pretty good. I'll take it. I'm going to get the Dolphins pick next year. Don't really need to take anyone here at number 23 overall, so I won't. I'll keep stockpiling for the future. But we do pick next as well. And then we pick at the top of the second round. I can't really imagine anything I'd want here. At receiver, we're fine. I don't need to take another receiver. I still could, but I, I think it'd be kind of a waste. I mean, maybe not. This one's 21. He also is a really good athlete. This Marquee Glover receiver also is really intriguing to me. He just kind of fits a mold we don't have anymore or have right now. That's down the board quite a bit. I'm going to trade down here as well. Commanders are offering me a first rounder. So are the Eagles, though. So which team do I think is going to be worse than the NFC East? We saw Jalen Hurts win MVP. I'll take the Commanders pick. Back-to-back -back picks in the second round. This might be where I go wide receiver tight end. That could work out, depending on if any of them are still available. Marky Glover's available. I mean, they both are. Let's take them. Marky Glover, physical, 21 years old as well, uh, decently fast, not anything crazy, not like elite speed like the other guy, but 90 speed is pretty good. Hidden dev, all right. And this tight end seems very, very good. Roderick Clinton, 6'4", 243, also only 21 years old. A deep route running, A catching traffic, B catching. Pretty fast. I'm interested to see what great speed is for a tight end here. Medium route running is an A as well. He only has normal development, 86 speed. That's pretty good. I'm actually going to draft a quarterback here, Bernie Collins. Out of Yale, he looks decent, to be honest. Has a cannon of an arm, real slow. He'll be a fine backup quarterback, 96 throw power. Yeah, we have Justin Herbert, so obviously he's not going to do anything, but be a good backup, I hope. This linebacker seems decent too. Elite speed. He's a pass coverage type with A tackle. B pursuit, A awareness. Only normal development, but I think the player looks pretty good. Draft recap. I think we did pretty well. Lockhart was a 76 overall, which is top five. Not amazing. 74 overall for Roderick Clinton. The quarterback is a whatever, but 71 overall for Landry Oglesby. Pretty good. And once again, the draft class just was not stacked. Jets got Kai Elam, Kai Elam, not Kair. So we've got some really good depth at receiver now. Goes without saying. <laughs> but uh, it's better than not having good depth. Frazier, I can move down just because I don't actually think he's that good. Logan has star dev. Okay. Tight end we drafted last year has star dev. Not really surprised there. Corner we drafted last year has star dev. Ed Oliver. Up to superstar X Factor, though. All right. And honestly, the move is to play your rookies as early as you possibly can because the biggest chance they have to gain a development upgrade 
is their rookie season. So if you can win them Offensive Rookie of the Year, and for wide receivers, I don't even think it's that difficult. Most of the time, just make them, I mean, you can make them your receiver too, but throw them in the slot. And in a lot of different playbooks, especially uh, Kansas City that I'm in now, they will get targeted a lot. So throw Terrence Lockhart in the slot. He doesn't even have to be a slot archetype. That's just where the most targets come from. Four and three at the midseason mark is a little better. Unfortunately, we're only 4-3, and we have a 96 overall offense. We'd like to be a little bit better than that. And it's another class where the top strength of the class is wide receiver. All right. Now, it said corner uh, was a strength of the class as well. I wonder if that's just overall or if there's actually a sick corner in here. I mean, they seem okay. This QB seems amazing. Zachary Thompson from Utah State. Packers going to take him, get another one in there. He seems like he would be, I would say, very, very, very good. Wow, Jamison Williams really does not want to be here. A lot of these guys don't want to be here. Jamison Williams does end up re-signing, though. He's just getting paid a billion dollars to do so. Aiden Hutchinson wants more money? Dude, what do you hate? The Lions is your hometown team. Uh, but the problem right now is that I'm running out of money. And I knew it would happen, but here we are. The long-term contracts, I mean... <laughs> those can really hurt you and i've also i've done a really good job to make sure that we have no wiggle room because of the long contracts i can't just trade anybody yeah i'm not gonna lie to you we're in a tough spot financially which i knew we were going to be <laughs> but uh yeah we'll figure it out we did finally make the playoffs though and we won the division in the process only nine wins though will thurman is just putting up numbers I hate this guy. Yeah, I feel like when one of those ads, doctors hate this guy. Doctors hate Will Thurman. Anyway, if you know, you know. Uh, Justin Herbert, great season though, over 5,000 yards passing, 41 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Kirk Jackson starting to really come on strong. He should be the focal point. He's at 96 overall. We got to get this guy going a little bit more, man. Really just take off. But three receivers with over 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns for the rookie out of Stanford, Terrence Lockhart. And he's only got star dev. That sucks. But he'll go up to superstar probably. So that's cool. Defensively, are we still not putting up very big numbers? We're not. 12 sacks for Benji Rhodes, 9 for Oliver, 8.5 for Lamar Edwards. Those are good numbers. But Aiden Hutchinson is doing like nothing. Can we beat the Cowboys? Cowboys, Lions, we do. 56 28. We put up 56 points. I mean, we're actually pretty good. Just our defense could be better. All right. Allowed 28 points out of the Cowboys. It's kind of too many. But we win again. And we have made it to the conference championship. Not going to duck in unless it's a Super Bowl because this is a 20 year rebuild. I have to get to 2042. And we've won again. And we'll be facing the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Okay. And I actually just got a notification on my computer that I've won Rookie of the Year. I don't know how that could possibly be the first time that that's happened, but I, I did get a notification. And uh, Will Thurman, oh, this dude, wins MVP. Unbelievable. Herbert finishes at 7th. We'll just only check the NFC. McCaffrey, Offensive Player of the Year. No Lions, Defensive Player of the Year. Yannick Ngakwe, Benji Rhodes, number eight, continuing to play really well. Terrence Lockhart is your offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. We got nobody. And now I'm really getting flashbacks to Lions franchise because this is the first team we played in the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was season three, season four. We played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl and we're beating them right now, 23 to 10, 30 to 10, 30 to 13. Chiefs trying to edge right back in it. But our defense is holding strong and our offense just keeps scoring. They won't be denied. And we, the Detroit Lions, or Detroit, preferred that way, win a Super Bowl for the first time ever. Yes, they won some NFL championships in the 50s, but have never made it to the Super Bowl, let alone have won one. Big time victory. 20-year rebuild is a success <laughs> here in what? Uh, season number three, four? We spent some money to do it, but we're going to have to let go of some really, really good players. So now the problem becomes, how do we get those guys back? Or how do we get talent back? How do we replace those players? 
Herbert surely will be Super Bowl MVP with four touchdowns. But you never know. If somebody had an interception or a pick six, they'll just get it automatically, it seems. 2025 season recap. Will Thurman MVP. We check these things out. But uh, yeah, Justin Herbert, Super Bowl MVP. Let's go. All right, Aiden Hutchinson now has more interest. Aquara is not going to come back. Hutch we need. Sewell I would love to get back. I think, unfortunately, Josh Pascal probably is the one that ends up going. I mean, I don't know why Aiden Hutchinson wants so much more money than this. It's kind of crazy. This is already a huge contract. I don't want to have to franchise tag him, but this is a huge contract. Aiden Hutchinson is back, though. I'd love to bring him back, but Josh Pascal unfortunately, is going to walk. And then Panay Sewell, I, I want Pascal back. How do I figure this out? Sewell is back, though. Okay. We have $6.9 to bring back Josh Pascal. I'm not going to sign anybody in free agency. I might just bite the bullet and, like, franchise tag him if I can. We can't offer him. Is he going to test free agency? Uh, no, you're not. I'm going to franchise tag you. We are 93 overall with a 97 offense, 93 defense. Interesting numbers. But, you know, I think... I think what we might end up doing here as Lockhart does go up to Superstar Dev is getting rid of a receiver at some point. Now, I don't really want it to be Amon Ross St. Brown. Also, Jamison Williams lost Superstar Dev, which is so stupid. I don't know how many times I have to turn off Dev trait regression, and they still do it. Also, I thought we had another one, but no. It's just Rhodes twice. Benji Rhodes up to Superstar X Factor. I would say worth trading up to the number one overall spot for. He has been very good. And then we keep Josh Paschal. Okuda goes up to superstar dev somehow. Don't really know how that would have happened. Let's see here. Defensive player of the week in the Super Bowl. There you go. All right. Do have a top 10 pick. I would very much consider moving to a 4-3 if we can find an outside linebacker that fits. Otherwise, I'm looking for a pass rusher. Also, Parker Gilmore... Looks pretty sick. Good enough accuracy, elite throw power, good athlete. He's going to be unbelievable. Also, Amari Winslow, this running back's going to be really good too. John Johns? Your name cannot be John Johns. It can't be. He's going to be pretty good too. John Johns. It, I've complained about John Johnson before because it's literally just like John Johnson the third, for example. John Johnson is a guy, right? He names his son John Johnson. So now John Johnson is the son of John, John Johnson. And then do that again. John Johnson's son, John Johnson, has a son named John Johnson, who's the son of John Johnson, who's already the son of John Johnson. And that's how you get John Johnson the third. And if that continues on, wow. But this dude is just John Johns. It's like Jimmy Johns, but John. This receiver also looks really good. I can't just keep drafting receiver. But the haunting of Hill House, which I've never seen, by the way, I know it's a thing. I, I don't, I can't tell you if it's a movie or a show, but I know it's a thing. Uh, but that's kind of a sick nickname if you're Hill House. And this receiver is also sick. Andrew Hurts, Hurts the defense. Ooh, lot of lot of talent. He's a top five talent. We know for a fact, actually. We know for a fact. If uh, I can't just keep drafting receivers, dude, I can't. But no one could stop me if I did, if I wanted to. Danny Sims down the board is going to be really good too. I wish there was some way to add players to your draft board during the draft. Like, obviously, you should do it before. Obviously. But I'm just kind of flying through these. Jeffrey Jordan looks good too. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. He's a Hall of Famer. And Parker Gilmore is still available. Somebody's going to get a really good value pick. It's just not going to be me. Because I'm taking Manny Thomas. He is a defensive end with A finesse moves, really good athleticism for the position, and does end up having hidden dev. Now, it doesn't really satisfy like playing outside linebacker, but gives us a little bit of versatility until we can figure out what to do. I still might take another rush linebacker. I pick in one pick, which I'm not sure if I will yet. And then we pick at the back end of the first round, of course, our Super Bowl winning pick. I'm going to take one, Gabriel Coles. Maybe should have been my first pick and then a trade down, but elite speed at the position, A finesse moves, only normal dev. All right, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing I took both. Normal dev, like, it's not the end of the world, but it, it's just so ugly to see. You know, a corner with very good speed and has at least B-man coverage, C-zone, 
may be worth taking here. It does have hidden dev, 93 speed. Okay, that's not bad at the back end of the first round. Ares Arthur is a crazy name. I just gotta say that. That's a crazy name. You got a first name and then... I mean, your first name is a last name. And your last name... This is also Jalen Hurts, but with a Y. L-N. I don't know what I'm seeing with these names, dude. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I'm gonna go... When do I pick? Let me just take Danny Sims. Why not? We'd be good depth, even if he's not great, but that looks pretty good with Hidden Dev. Unfortunately, the other defensive tackles off the board, but Devin Booker, star guard for the Suns, is available. He has A to C block shed, so there is potential there. Let's go with him. Also, Hidden Dev looks, I mean, nearly identical to the other draft pick. But Manny Thomas is only a 73, so... A developmental guy for sure. Cole is 75. Bayless is 75. And then the two defensive tackles are just okay. 69 overall, 70 overall. Nice. And John Johns, this is insane. He's an 84. The legend of John Johns. I feel like you can't just say it like John Johns. You gotta say John Johns. That's, it's ridiculous. There also is another 80 overall running back. And the receivers were pretty good. I guess I thought the quarterback would be a little bit better. He's a 75 overall. He's playing down. Only normal dev. I mean, he looks pretty awesome. You know, we're going to try out the Jags playbook. Base 3-4 Jacksonville. We're going to do that for defense. So this is the way the team's going to look. It's a little bit weird, but I'm starting Aiden Hutchinson and Josh, uh, Josh Pascal, which I wanted to do anyway. A lot of Joshes on this team, by the way. Josh Herbert. We got Josh Pascal. Josh Peck, Josh Okuda, and six and one at the midseason mark is very good. Our offense dominating, but the big thing for me, our defense is also dominating. So Kirk Jackson really doesn't want to come back. He wants to be in a warm weather state, but also close to home. Pick a thing. You, you're close to home is South Dakota. How do you want a warm weather state, but also South Dakota? You know the NFL teams close to South Dakota? None of them. Geographically, the closest team to South Dakota are the Vikings, which, I mean, fairly close, even though Minneapolis is the other side of the, uh, of the state. I mean, after that, it probably goes Packers, maybe the Broncos, but for sure Bears, and then the Lions. I don't know. Seahawks might be in the conversation. I don't know. South Dakota is located in an interesting spot, but I need this player back. Am I really just going to overpay huge for a running back? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, unfortunately, I just paid all of my remaining salary to a running back, and I can't afford to bring back anybody else. Why did I not check out how much cap room I had before I did that? That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Now I have to really do some wheeling and dealing to free up some cap space because we're in a rough spot. So I'm looking at the contracts. There's no way Frank Ragnow is coming back. I just, whatever I do, I need to make sure Benji Rhodes stays a lion. Other than that, I really actually don't care. But if we can win another Super Bowl, it won't matter. If we have to win two Super Bowls in a row and then lose for a season or two, or lose a couple of our best players and still, like, compete, that's okay. Okay, 12-5 and five and made the playoffs. Did quite well. And there's a new number one. His name is, what, Leonard Stecker? Hold on just a second. We still have the clown Will Thurman. Dude is just unstoppable. You know, Russell Wilson, two and two. Uh, yeah, Leonard Stecker. Year three, dude just explored. I guess year four for him. Can't throw deep to save his life with 99 throw power. Interesting. What an, in what an interesting quarterback. Uh, Will Thurman still here. Still dominating. Still very annoying. Justin Herbert did very well, though as did Kirk Jackson, a career year as he got paid. And you know what? Maybe I made a good move bringing him back. It's a lot of money to pay a running back, certainly. But you know what? He's a beast and he's worth it. Jamison Williams did very, very well. And TJ Hawkinson had a career year at tight end. Amon Ross St. Brown had a pretty good year as well. Terrence Lockhart, I would say, did well enough. And Andrew Jenkins had an awesome year as well. 120 tackles, eight for loss, three and a half sacks. Very good. 24 tackles for loss for Benji Rhodes, though, who also had 11 sacks. 16, though, from Ed Oliver led the way. 
Hutch with eight, six and a half for Lamar Edwards, Manny Thomas with five. But we were successful, so I don't really, even though like guys like Aiden Hutchinson aren't getting unbelievable numbers up, we're performing well, so I really don't feel the need to change anything. We have a 99 offense, 91 defense, making a 95 overall. We won in the wild card. Can we beat the commanders in the divisional? Nope. That's our season. And now we have to figure out, okay, how do we keep our team together? Not going to be easy. Season recap actually has the commanders beating the Broncos in the Super Bowl. And look who's your MVP, Will Thurman. But the offensive rookie of the year was quarterback Parker Gilmore, who we talked about quite a bit. Justin Herbert does go up to superstar X Factor, and so does Jamison Williams. But check out this. Never seen this before because it's new to Madden 23. But Colin Larson won Offensive Lineman of the Year and went to Superstar Dev. I'm in. Oh, okay. Manny Thomas. Do we, did he get it or did he have it? Manny Thomas had Superstar Development. So we've done really well there to draft him. Uh, isn't really a great fit for the 3-4, to be honest, but he is good. And then Deshaun Elliott also goes up to Superstar Dev as well. I wonder if he's got a DB of the year. Nope, just had it. Just got Superstar Dev. And he's regressing already. How old is he? 30 now. All right. Okay, negative 9 million in available salary cap, which means we can't even offer Benji Rhodes. Can't even do it. Looks like we're probably going to end up losing Bernard Watford as well, and Andrew Jenkins, and Josh Paschal. Oh, this is tough. I don't want to lose Watford or Rhodes. Ragnow, I just don't care. It's a center. But I don't know any way that I'll be able to clear up cap space. The thing is, like, we'll never be... Well, I not never, but... It'd be very, very difficult to replace Benji Rhodes. Watford as well, but I think we could do it. The other guys, we could do it. I just, I don't know how we're going to create any space. We're paying so much money to Justin Herbert, and it, he's worth it. But man, I don't want to lose those two players. There's just no way to do it. It, uh, it is what it is. I, I did this, and now I have to live with the consequences. We went all out to try and win a championship. And unfortunately, it did not end up happening back to back. Rhodes is the top free agent. Everybody's interested. And, he, and also Frank Ragnow in here. You don't have to go far to find Bernard Watford, who we, of course, cannot even offer. Okay, so the top corner is very, very good. How fast are you? Not fast. Uh, probably takes him off my board, but he's going to be really good anyway. This safety looks pretty good. Tyrone Killings. B-man, B-tackle, B-zone. Real good athlete, just obviously not anywhere to the level of the, uh, the safety we had on our team earlier. NFL draft time. We need to consider a couple different things. One, well, we don't pick until number 26. That's fine. But the biggest thing I would say is that we have to replace Frank Rag now on offense. And then defensively, we don't have a starter at free safety. A corner could do it. 100%. So worst comes to worst, we can do it. I'm looking for, I mean, Thomas can play outside linebacker. We could move a defensive tackle over. It would still work in the 3-4. Perfectly fine. But our biggest thing is just replace talent. Replace the talent we lost. So the only guy I have on my board right now is Ray Darius Drummond, whose head looks like a bowling ball. That thing looks like it weighs 60 pounds. He's got A power moves, B tackle. He's decently athletic. The uh, A power moves obviously sticks out quite a lot. We'll take him. Hidden Dev. Man, that thing looks heavy. There goes one of the safeties I had my eye on, Michael Samuels. I don't think I added him to my favorites, but he did look pretty good. And all of my favorites are off the board. Oh, this guy? Maybe did a little steroids back in his day? Larry Bonds? <laughs> Barry Bonds, man. 73 home runs in a season. Kind of a lot. Okay, this receiver ran 4-2-4, and he's the playmaker type. He's got A, deep route running, but he also can't catch at all. I've never seen so many Fs, but at running back, maybe? We could have something there. I mean, he's got 99 speed. I'm going to take him. Jesus. We'll figure it out. That's just what we're going to do. 99 speed's going to play. You know, this corner actually 
Looks like he could play a little bit of safety. Pat Conrad out of Kentucky. 6'1", 207, has the build for it. A press is interesting, but B zone. He's got safety speed. Let's take him. Pat Conrad does have hidden dev. 91 speed, 96 jumping. Okay, this outside linebacker could end up being bad, but the fact that he even has A to C for block shedding and zone coverage with decent pursuit tackling, good athlete. I'm going to take a chance on this player. Uh, doesn't look amazing just from the athletic ratings. Not really a huge surprise. Uh, but as Madden in his name, and that's a video game I'm playing, maybe he's good. So Radarius Drummond, we're going to change some uh, some positions here. Drummond's a 74. Don't think he's going to play much as a rookie. But Sergio Love, I would love for him to be a running back. Because he's not going to be a receiver. Not with his catching. Overall, actually is still a 68 if it was previously. He's kind of just fast. Yeah, Pat Conrad, that's a safety. His overall actually stays at a 70 though, which is fine. Rushing is a 78 highest rated player in the class. It was an okay draft class, nothing special. I am getting trade offers for Austin Frazier though. Brandon Cooks, I could use this linebacker. Okay, we need to actually look at some of these. Okay, so he's an 80 at 26 years old. Darrell Thomas is an 88, 87 really, wearing Lawrence Taylor's number 56. That can't happen. So I have like serious, serious depth at wide receiver. Uh, yeah, I would, I would very happily trade Austin Frazier in pursuit of this player. And that would put me over the salary cap. Well, I'm already under, I mean, I'm already way over. I'm way over. Can I just accept it from here though? Yeah, I can. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> so we're definitely we're definitely worse than we were last year, I think, but I've moved some things around. I think I've put us in the best position to be successful. We still need an upgrade. I guess it's safety overall at a middle linebacker could be. I've got Oglesby there for now. And then as far as the specialist goes, I kind of want Thomas rushing the passer. It's a waste for him not to be. Our offense should really have no problem. I'm just, you know, obviously a little concerned with the defense. These two are different people, by the way. Same face, same bowling ball head, but different fella. And we are six and one at the midseason mark. Still a uh, negative salary cap, not good. And the reason why that is, for those curious who don't uh, understand it, totally fine. But when we've offered these long-term contracts, as you'll see in the case of like Kirk Jackson, it gets more expensive year by year. That's just the way the contract is structured. Uh, in order for that long-term security, it's more expensive to keep them around. However, in the case of a contract like Justin Herbert, and you, it's the same for Kirk Jackson, we just can't see it. Uh, the final years of the deal, year six and seven, are actually gonna be weighted differently than the first five or whatever we signed for Justin Herbert. So it actually gets cheaper to get him in 2029 and 2030. But there are some years like this year, or next year for Herbert, where it gets Super expensive. Okay, well, maybe we don't actually need an upgrade of free safety. Pat Conrad, the corner we drafted by chance, has superstar development. We've moved him to free safety, and I think now there's a chance he's our free safety of the future. Why would he not be? So our free agents, we have 28 mil in cap room to bring these guys back. DeAndre Swift, obviously we cannot bring back. Ed Oliver, I probably, I'll consider. Frazier, no. I'd love to trade him, but I can't. Or Warrior, no. Corin Bridges, probably not. So do I want to bring anybody back, I said? I think it was just just maybe Ed Oliver. I offered him a contract. He declined. It's like 20 mil a year, and I don't know if he's worth that. So we'll uh we'll just continue on. We're doing well. Six and one. Could be another Super Bowl contending year for sure. Uh we had an unbelievable collapse. I mean, just, it's just so stupid. We started six and one, right? Lost to the Giants. And then after the deadline, we lost, we won. Loss, 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 loss. Sick. Probably the biggest collapse I've ever seen. Uh, we were 24th in points per game allowed. So I think you can pin it on the defense here. The offense was obviously extremely productive. Justin Herbert was amazing. Kirk Jackson was amazing. 
I mean, I would give him 350 carries if I could figure out a way. And I'm sure there is change playbook, but then Justin Herbert doesn't throw the ball as much and he's been amazing. So I don't know. We could change things, but we've also got such great depth at receiver that, I mean, I don't think we're doing anything wrong offensively. So I wouldn't really call that the problem. Ed Oliver continues to dominate. 16 sacks. Lamar Edwards has eight interceptions, three for Tremaine Edmonds, three for Chris Bayless, who is a corner that's, I guess, starting now. He had 88 tackles, three for Deshaun Elliott. But yeah, no playoffs, unbelievably, after a 6-1 and one start. I don't think I've ever seen a collapse that bad. The Bears beat the Jags in the Super Bowl. Justin Sherman is your NFL MVP. Nothing really to report, other than Trayvon Diggs winning Super Bowl MVP with the Bears here. Okay, so 22 million in available salary cap. We could extend out Oliver. Uh, DeAndre Swift, no. Frazier, no. I, the interest of these guys have changed. I guess they're kind of anticipating on being on a contender, and we are not. But um, I think I am going to try and extend at Oliver. The low risk is three years. It's so expensive. But you know what? Ed Oliver's dominating. We're going to bring him back. Jesse Bates in free agency. I don't have the cap room. Oh, here's Darrell Thomas, too. That would have been big. Uh, I don't have the cap room to offer. We did have it somehow with Ed Oliver, and now we're at negative 2.8. So I'm not really sure what happened there. It could be factoring in draft picks now. That's a possibility. I don't really think we're going to cut anybody. Maybe Deshaun Elliott at this point. I'll see if I can get something for him. We're getting a second round pick for Deshaun Elliott. Maybe could have even gotten more. It's not bad. And you know, it's not worth it to pay Colin Larson 13 million. It just isn't. But at the same time, I, this is why I don't pick up fifth year options very often. It's just, it's just not worth it. Mike Hughes though. Mike Hughes is 31 years old. He's an 81 overall. I'm going to try and trade him as well. And we got a pick at the top of the second round as well. Very easy to get those second round picks. Not very valuable, but to me they are. And you know what? I'm also going to cut Jack Fox. It is There's no penalty to cutting him, and I can get a cheaper punter. Maybe even get him back for cheaper. Nah, I still have no money. Maybe not worth cutting Jack Fox. So we pick at number 11. Just got to figure out how we want to play this. I still would not be opposed to taking a safety, even though I think we found our safety of the future, or at least free safety of the future, because there are a couple good ones and I don't want to just discount those guys, especially if you have a man coverage. Like, I'm going to consider you. Jalen Hopkins looks really good. Out of Texas, too. Hook em Horns, former DBU. I have to say former because they really have not produced DBs at the same rate that they used to. You know, I don't understand how this guy's around one to two talent. He looks like one of the best offensive linemen I've seen with great strength, great speed. Uh, yeah, I don't really like anyone in this draft class here. There's some okay players. I don't really want to take an okay player. I want to take a great player. And I don't think I have that opportunity. Kasim Madden, another Madden dude. I'm, I'm tempted here. I don't know. A tackle, B awareness. Decent enough athletically. Could end up moving to a 4-3. I just don't. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. Hidden Dev, 84 speed. Not the best athlete of all time, but he's okay. Uh, I will uh, take this Dolphins first rounder next year for my second round pick. Got another one coming up here in a second as well. And uh, I'm gonna trade down. Ravens offering a first, let's take it. Pretty athletic safety, to be honest. A hit power, his own coverage is just whatever. Gonna take a chance on him. Hidden Dev, 91 speed, pretty good. All right. Bucks offering a second round pick next year. I'll take that for my third. 74 overall for Madden. The safety is a 75. And then Jerry Gaines in the fourth round is a 73, a receiver. I didn't draft him. CPU did. Guess we need more depth at receiver. All right. And the safety I was going to take, Jalen Hopkins out of Texas, is an 81. He just did not make it to my pick, and I did not trade up for him. But he would have been a really good option, 81 overall. And Love, Sergio Love, the receiver that we put at running back, has superstar development. Now he's being upgraded as a receiving back, so he's really just not getting better as a running back at all. But I'm going to keep him at running back. TJ Hawkinson, by the way, is up to superstar X-Factor. Still really don't have a center. And then defensively, 
I mean, Sinclair is just going to start right away at strong safety to replace Deshaun Elliott. And Madden, I think I'll just move him to middle linebacker. Bayless is up to superstar dev, by the way. Really competitive NFC North. We snuck into the playoffs at 9-8. and eight. Uh, Our offense took a big step back. Our defense was pretty good, though. And every team in the NFC North had at least eight wins, which is kind of crazy. And three of the four teams were above 500. Justin Herbert was worse this year, like significantly worse. So many interceptions compared to where he has been. A little bit bewildering as to why that happened. And even Kirk Jackson took a step back. You go from averaging 5.8 yards per carry to 4.2 in a year. Well, something's up. So that's a little bit strange as well. Receiving, Jamison Williams still was really productive, but all of our numbers across the board just seem to be down offensively. And then defensively, Danny Sims, 23 tackles for loss, 15 and a half sacks for Ed Oliver, who continues to play well. And then Ray Darius Drummond put up 14 sacks. Very interesting. Wild card round of the playoffs. We lose and we're headed to the offseason. Packers beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Jair wins Super Bowl MVP. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl, or should be uh, NFL MVP. And uh, yeah, man, he had a really good year, I'm sure. Usually the MVP has a pretty good year. I'll say that. All right, so we have some money, but that's probably because we have a lot of guys to re-sign. Quentin Nelson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Colin Larson. Terrence Lockhart lost superstar dev. I'm going to give it back to him. As did Jeff Okuda. I'm going to give it back to him. The rookie Madden had star development, so I mean, still good. I just I really got to figure out how to how to make this team work. It's a good team, really good team, just not elite. We haven't really had elite corners during the entire time. I think we're gonna make some trades. We're gonna move to a four three, and it's just gonna be a better team. All right. So the defense. I mean, it's looking not amazing, honestly. Let's make some trades. Let's put it in a better spot. I'd like to bring Quentin Nelson back. It's very expensive for two years, but we'll do it. Same deal with Colin Larson. He's just very good. Only 27 years old, and he is back. I'd rather bring back Terrence Lockhart, I think, than Amon Ross St. Brown, just because of the age thing. Marquis Glover is here as well. I mean, there are some good players, no doubt. But that money might be a little bit more valuable to me. Jeff Okuda's got to walk. Jonah Jackson probably will go as well. Lockhart is going to be huge to bring back. Absolutely huge. And uh, we'll give him a four-year contract. Pretty expensive, but I think if it comes down to it, it's him against uh, St. Brown here. I think that's the better move. And I'd love to give him a one-year contract and then maybe trade him. Not interested in signing. That's okay. And honestly, Marquis Glover on a big time contract, that might be even more well worth it. He's only 79 overall, but that is an obvious breakout candidate just waiting to happen. In free agency, some decent players in here. It's so funny to see guys like Jahan Dotson at 29 years old, but that's how deep we are into the franchise at this point. Isaiah Simmons is 31, as is Jeremy Chin. So my big focus here is probably going to be signing guys that don't even exist in real life. So there's a strong safety, Josh Herrick, that looks really good. Might consider offering him. And this outside linebacker, Deontay Whitfield, I'm very interested in. He is a power rusher, which I think would be a better fit for my team uh, at left end. I know we have a guy there currently. Whitfield is an upgrade, and if we can get a good contract, this would be... I think a steal. And he's actually really not too expensive. But we might have to offer a little bit more than that in order to convince him to come to our team. It actually, I mean, we just got to deal with who we have currently. I'm going to offer Isaiah Simmons. He's a better fit to play off the ball. He is a little bit older at this point, but I think he's a better fit. So my targeted players, it's Tredavious White, Isaiah Simmons. Is there anybody else I wanted to get? That's right, the strong safety. Josh Herrick, nobody's offered on him either. He's only 26. I mean, I would give him a five-year deal at the same price, and I think we'd be able to steal this guy, maybe even bring it down a little bit. We're the only team offering him, so we could get a steal here. And everyone's gone. We signed two of the three. We got Trey White for two years. We got Josh Herrick for five years. Big 
big free agency. Unfortunately, did not get Isaiah Simmons. St. Brown's still here. So if we want a linebacker, we're going to have to trade for one. Unless Paul Henry would fit well. Is an off-ball player for a season or two? Yeah, I think so. And we have the number one offer. It really isn't even that bad. And the number one offer ends up getting accepted. Big time upgrades for us in free agency here. It's been a minute. Been a minute since we've actually had money to spend. And the reason why Henry is such a good pickup is Tremaine Edmonds is not going to be here forever. Uh, we do have good depth at safety now. Here's the problem. We have like almost, almost nothing at corner. So I could definitely move Pat Conrad back to corner. His man coverage is so bad though. He was always meant to be a safety for me. Sinclair, his man coverage is terrible too. So corner is just a really big need. We need corner really badly. I have so much depth on the D line though, that I can trade one of these defensive tackles for a linebacker if I want, or I can start Madden uh, and we can get a corner somehow. So we pick at number two overall. We should really be able to do whatever we want to do. Just kind of depends who is on the board. A few good quarterbacks, not gonna be taking one of those obviously. And the corners are underwhelming, which means I'm gonna have to trade for one. Although Jalen Garns is a very interesting safety. A man, A tackle, A to C zone coverage, very solid athlete. 59203 could be a really good option at slot corner. Luke Griffin, he also looks really, really good, but I just don't think I need another edge rusher right now. So out of the players I want, I mean, it really just is the left end, who I think would be a really good fit, or the strong safety that would probably end up playing slot corner for me. So it's probably the corner at number one on my board, Jalen Garns. Very close to the crocodile, Hannah. Steve Irwin, but it's Steve Irvin there. The Raiders will give me number six and a second round pick next year if I trade down. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll trade from number two to number six. The safety should still be there. Uh, emphasis on should. I'm not 100% sure on this. So things could change, but he is still available. It will be my pick. I plan on playing him at corner. Got 91 speed, 95 acceleration. I think it's going to work out just fine. The A-man coverage is the big thing, and zone coverage could be quite good as well. And you know what? This linebacker looks pretty good, too. I've taken a lot of linebackers, and they've all kind of been around the same. But he looks very, very good. A.J. Wheeler, instead of trading for a linebacker, I'm going to take one. He's only got normal development. The player, again, it looks nothing like his picture in the top left there, uh, looks good. But the normal development will definitely hurt. I am trading a first-round pick, number 22 overall. My third string strong safety, third string strong safety. Wow, that's a lot of, how is that a tongue twister? Uh, and a second round pick for a first next year from the Broncos. I tried to go after Patrick Sertan, didn't end up happening. Andrew Booth Jr. is also uh, worth considering here. But because we haven't really seen too many good corners come into the league, like the best corners are all like 28 plus, And there's no one that even has like, superstar dev under 27 years old except for Zach Rushing who plays on the Vikings and the Vikings have another young stud Dylan Moreland superstar x-factor inside linebacker another guy I'm just not going to trade for but uh it's very rare so far in Madden 23 to see a high rated player that's young with a good dev trade I just haven't really seen him trading Gabriel Coles and Devin Booker. It's a rush linebacker and my fourth string defensive tackle for McCauley, who could potentially start at inside linebacker for us or just like outside linebacker, start at off ball linebacker. So um, I know we just drafted one, but normal dev, I'm trying to get some new guys in there as well. Uh, keep them fresh, get the, the young guys that we can have for a while. So just had to be done. It's been a while since we drafted a receiver. We're gonna take Chad Smiley. Uh, looks pretty bad, except he sure is fast and elusive. And with 96 speed, 95 change of direction, we could have something here. At least a good return, man. Draft recap, we're still a really good team. 92 overall. It's a shame we've only won the one Super Bowl here in 2029, but Jalen Garns was worth the pick, man. 81 overall. And I said I was going to play him at corner. I think I still will. He's got 81 man, 77 zone. He's a little small, but you can't argue he is uh, built for corner, especially in the slot with his size, but should just be a really good slot corner. He was the highest overall player in the class. 
Cordell Dodson's an 80, and then a big drop off to 76 beyond that. And you can see even our draft class after the first guy really went downhill. A.J. Wheeler's not that good. Chad Smiley's a 73. He's just fast. Damn, Brees Hall's a 98? Wow. And Tredavious White's not going to be here for that long anyway. But this is the team. I think McCauley should start at outside linebacker. I think that's the best move. Or we could honestly just leave it as is. And this looks pretty good. So let's do that. And then I'll play McCauley actually over Edmonds as a sub linebacker. So we just have the best players on the field at all times. Exactly what you want to do. I wish I had a better defensive end. Like it's just such a shame we lost out on the guy I drafted in season one. And there he is, Benji Rhodes with the commanders right now. Is there any way I can get this guy? I want him back. Back on the team. I would very easily trade Manny Thomas to get it done. I wouldn't even think twice. And you know what? His overall might be higher at right outside linebacker, or at least his value to them. So I'm going to try that. Doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to get this done. I'm going to have to get a little bit more creative with how I do this. So I'm trading the receiver Jerry Gaines, number 11 projected, and a fourth for the number two overall projected pick from the Dolphins. And I'm going to try and use that to trade for our superstar. The one that got away, Benji Rhodes. I think I'll have to include Manny Thomas in the deal to get it done, but the number two overall pick should hold a little bit more weight, and it's going to significantly. We could just throw in a three here and get real close, maybe even get it. Okay, no, it might actually, I don't even know if a second will make this go through now that I see that. Yeah, it's, it's very close, but not quite there. It's going to be Manny Thomas, number two projected, number 21 projected for Benji Rhodes, but he is back. Welcome back to Detroit. Blockbuster trade, and we needed it. We needed it in a big way. Aiden Hutchinson's cool. Benji Rhodes is unbelievable. Trading my third string middle linebacker, I want to say, Danny Sims, who is my third string defensive tackle. He's right around the same overall. He's one of these big head guys, remember? Uh, but it's 25 compared to 23 of the other second string fighting for defensive tackle. So I went with the, the younger guy, traded the older guy. And a fifth round pick gets me a first from the Cardinals just to have one uh, in case there's a good player in this class. Always got to be ready for that. And uh, we'll set up the team and hopefully be in a really good spot. Defense just got a whole lot better. I'm expecting really big things. And Smiley, by the way, has superstar development. I guess something about 99 speed, they, they probably had to, right? Yeah, that is a really good pick. Not much of a route runner in the short or intermediate areas of the field, but he's got decent spectacular catch and obviously is incredibly fast. I guess he was not the 99 speed guy. I guess he was the 96. I guess yeah, Sergio Love was the one with 99 speed. Yeah, the dude playing running back for us. Okay, so I'm excited to see how this team ends up performing here. Obvious talent. We could stand to improve in the secondary and, I mean, I mean, really everywhere, but the defensive line looks very, very good. So I'm really interested to see how this team performs and we will simulate straight to, not to the Super Bowl, let's do straight to the playoffs. Playoff time, we went 14 and three. Very, very good. Will Thurman is still just dominating. Tempting me to go Tampa playbook, but Justin Herbert led the league in passing touchdowns, so maybe I don't do that. Great year for him. Kirk Jackson's back to being a beast. Nearly 1,600 yards, 17 touchdowns. Very good season. Jamison Williams was awesome. And 13 touchdowns for Marquis Glover. Hawk with a great year as well. And then defensively, Paul Henry led our team in tackles. 17 for Benji Rhodes. Welcome back to Detroit. Hutch with 16, also had 14 and a half sacks. But of course, the 18 and a half from Benji Rhodes led the way. Oliver still productive enough. And uh, we actually got some interceptions this time around. Five for Chris Bayless who is now an 89 overall, or at least playing up to it from an 86. And with Superstar Dev, he is well on his way to being a dominant CB1 for us. It's nice to get a first round by. We are a 99 offense, 95 defense for a 97 overall. And uh, we'll see if we can beat the 49ers here in the playoffs in the divisional round by two. We've got plus 11 overall to the Rams. And unfortunately for us, I'm sure they'll knock us out of the playoffs. That just seems to be how those things go. But this could be a big win for us. Nope. 
We are into the Super Bowl. The Niners don't knock us out. And we face the Broncos in the Super Bowl, our second time appearing in this game, and could be our second time winning. Cold opponent. The Broncos are struggling. They're in the Super Bowl. What do you mean they're struggling? They've literally won every playoff game. That's how you get here. And first of all, I'm going to give Ed Oliver superstar X Factor again and Herrick superstar. Annoying that it keeps taking it away, uh, even with it turned off. I think it's a better experience with it off, by the way. That's why I do that. Um, but Jalen Garns, superstar dev. So really good draft pick. Didn't have superstar X Factor. Wasn't a generational player, but was the next best thing. And I will say, you can also have superstar X Factor without being generational. But... Um, you know, he was he was really good overall too. Super Bowl time, we are a 97 to their 91. So it might not be an easy win, but hopefully we come away with our second Super Bowl of the rebuild thus far. I mean, this game isn't even close. I looked away for a minute and it's, it was 28 nothing. The Broncos are actually trying to come back in this game, but they're not going to. It is 35-17, that is your final Lions with Super Bowl number two another Lombardi trophy synonymous with the Packers Vince Lombardi famous head coach of the Green Bay Packers obviously uh won a lot with them I mean like won a lot with the team of course the uh Lombardi trophy Super Bowl trophy named after him but it's not like he won a bunch of Super Bowls it's the same way that like Cy Young never won the Cy Young award which I guess means he probably wasn't that good of a pitcher but so synonymous with the Lions arguable biggest rival right up there i mean it's tough the nfc north all it's like very famous rivalries i would say all very historic teams and um we end up getting our second of the video and uh doing pretty well so far team is obviously a powerhouse keeping it together is always the tough part but our second super bowl desmond ritter won mvp christian mccaffrey offensive player of the year could try out panthers playbook that's always really really good for running backs and maybe i will 13 players ready to negotiate. How good are they? Benji Rhodes, just traded for, won a Super Bowl, worked out. TJ Hawkinson, Tremaine Edmonds, we're going to let go. Chris Bayless, I'd like to bring back. But the big one here is, of course, Benji Rhodes. Four-year deal. Let me make this, let me make this five. I think that's a good deal for me. Very expensive, but the player is phenomenal. And then Chris Bayless. I think a four-year deal at this price is pretty good. So Chris Bayless returns. I don't want him forever. He's getting older. And I think along those same lines, I think I'm going to let TJ Hawkinson go. Really good player. Obviously super important for our offense, but our offense might change. Might be more running back focused, not so tight end focused. He's 33, has won two Super Bowls with us, but I'm not paying him, you know, 15 a year. I'm just not doing it. Tremaine Edmonds, goodbye. Uh, Dewan Lewis, we don't need. We're going to save our money. Free agency, Hawkinson's here, of course. He is 33 years old. It just, it's not a good fit anymore. Dude's name is Alien? <laughs> Alien Bo. Kind of a sick name. Could be a good fit. It's not super expensive. I'll give him a four-year deal. If he wants to sign on, that's great. I don't know if he's going to have even too much interest from anybody else. And I, I'm assuming he probably ends up signing on. And he does. We got the Alien. So Tredavious White is gone. He, I think, retired and Quentin Nelson's also gone. I'm pretty sure he retired as well. So CB1 is out of the picture, unfortunately, and uh, left tackle one, also out of the picture. Not good. Panay Sewell could slide over and play left tackle, no problem, but either way, we still need a tackle. We could still use upgrades on the offensive line, period. I need a punter, but it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Hudson Brandt will work, fake player, so he's uh, obviously a lot younger than anyone real right now. Only 29. Hopefully he ends up signing on. Anything good on the offensive line at all right now? Jonah Williams is gone. Jerry Johns is here. Barry Butler. A lot of alliteration with these guys. Seems like he'd be a really good fit on the offensive line. Expensive, but good. So these are my targets. A left guard, a left tackle, and a punter. Hopefully we get all three. And... No one's interested in the left tackle anymore, and we should be able to get Ernie McLeod as well. So we signed the left tackle. You know we signed the tight end. And we got the left guard also. So 
Our team is getting a whole lot better here, and we still should be able to sign this punter at some point. I guess he just doesn't want to be lowballed quite so much, but guess what? You're a punter. You kind of have to say yes at some point. Now, I probably did spend too much of the uh, salary cap again. We only have $9 million. It's going to roll over into the next year, so not great. And I think with the depth on this team, our draft strategy is just going to be take the best player available regardless of position. It might be a good idea to see expiring contracts first, though. In fact, I know it's going to be a good idea to see that. Trade offers for a defensive tackle, Ray Darius Drummond. I don't know why we'd accept those, though. He's a starter. Ed Oliver, Justin Herbert. Herbert's really expensive. It would be a better idea to get a rookie in, but the rookie's just not going to be nearly as good, though. Defensive tackle is going to be big, I would say. If there's a sick defensive tackle, I'm not going to hesitate. Okay, Montreal Banks is unbelievable. A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackling. That's the best player in the draft, I can tell you, in a second, in a heartbeat. So this has now become operation, get the number one overall pick. Montreal Banks is potentially generational. He's a really good athlete, not amazing, but really good. He will be worth drafting. I will guarantee you that. Because when you see a player like that, that has A, first of all, in one stat is good, but in multiple attributes, that's when you start approaching, okay, guaranteed 80 overall range, and we got to get him. Okay, trading. My backup free safety, Eric Roach. I believe Eric. He's 26 years old, pretty good, but also moving the number 11 pick, a third rounder next year, I should say, for the number one pick. Again, I I'm going to tell you it's worth it. It's worth it to move up and get this guy because he's 6'5", 270. I'd say scheme versatile at that size, only 21 years old, very good athlete overall, and he's technically very good with A power moves, A finesse moves. The player will be very, very worth drafting. I'm going to guess 79 overall minimum. Brenton Woodard out of Oregon is kind of like that. I mean, we've seen this build of a defensive tackle before. He's got elite speed, ran 4.75, even 4.69. Nice. Sub 4.7 at his pro day. Good strength, A finesse moves. Again, another guy. We've seen this build. Worth drafting. Doesn't have star dev or anything, but 88 strength, 80 speed with A finesse moves at the position is uh, pretty good. And the CPU can handle the rest. They'll fill out the roster. Still getting trade offers for Ray Darius Drummond. What makes you think I want to trade him? How old is Roquan Smith at this point that you're offering me him? Gotta be ancient. I'll check out Pendleton and Baskerville from the Giants and Raiders, but I'm probably not gonna end up trading uh, what is a very good defensive tackle. Pendleton, normal dev, no. I'm looking for good dev traits. I was even not gonna trade if he had star dev. I was looking for superstar. And, oh, you're old. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Okay, so I accidentally simulated past the draft recap. Is there a way if I just back out and go back in? Maybe it'll show back up. Maybe it's glitched, I hope. <laughs> it's not going to. Um, that's annoying. Nope, screwed up. So let's sort by age here. Montreal Banks is an 80, but he's actually a 78. I thought he was at least going to be a 79. 80 power moves, 79 finesse moves. I still feel like that's pretty good. Drafted a future starter tag at right guard. I mean, both of these, I'm looking at three rookies that all have the future starter tag. I think it's probably because they all have hidden dev. Is that what that means? I think it does. And I would say I'm most excited. There's a receiver here as well. I'm most excited about the right guard that I saw. 73 overall, playing up to it. But yeah, hidden dev, rookie offensive lineman. Okay. I'll look through the youngest players at each position here. Um, I wish you could see the draft recap in another area. But unfortunately, that's interesting. So there's a 79 overall running back. But you have to go position by position. Malik McDonald seems pretty good. Some decent rookie uh, corners in here. But I, there's not really a ton to note. So we did trade up for the number one overall pick. And I think the number one overall player in the class, he's not going to play right away because we just have better players in front of him, but it's a good draft and stash, as they call it. It'll actually be a rush defensive tackle, which is pretty good for him. He's definitely going to play. I don't know how much, but he'll definitely see the field. Ooh, Jalen Garns, plus one speed with the zone upgrade. Makes him even a little bit more usable. Still a little bit short for the outside. I don't really think it's going to matter in simulation, though. And I switched to Carolina Playbook. Interested to see what Kirk Jackson can do. Once again, I think I'm just going to simulate straight to 
the playoffs. So it looks like we snuck into the playoffs here at 13 and four, only with a wild card berth, a little bit frustrating. And Justin Taylor is not a player that, who, who even is that? Uh, it is two in the morning. I started recording at 5 p.m., just so you're aware. Uh, Justin Herbert, 4,900 yards, 44 touchdowns, 10 picks. And Kirk Jackson was great, over 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns. But the big thing happened that I wanted to have happen, which is he got way more touches. And guess what? Was still extremely productive in those touches, thankfully. And receiving, still see top production from our top guys. Just the tight end is not quite involved, which makes sense with no TJ Hawkinson anymore. Even the running back, obviously, in Carolina Playbook, going after Christian McCaffrey, very, very productive. Defensively, Paul Henry had a plenty of tackles, 21 tackles for loss for Ed Oliver, including seven sacks. Aiden Hutchinson at 17 and a half. Hopefully that's enough to get him superstar dev finally. Benji Rose with 13 and a half. And the strong safety, Josh Herrick, brought in four interceptions. A little slow for sure, but overall, very good player. 99 tackle. Block shedding is low, but otherwise could be a pretty beastly uh, linebacker. Beat Dallas in the wild card. Divisional against the 9-8. Arizona Cardinals beat them by a field goal, 42-39. And it's got to be the Falcons that we have to beat in order to make it back to the Super Bowl. Can we beat Atlanta? They're at 88. At this point, we are only a 93 overall. Still very, very good. Just not quite the 97 overall uh, that we'd seen before. or very close to it. And we are in the Super Bowl and our matchup is not easy. It's the 91 overall Jacksonville Jaguars who nearly went undefeated. They have a 16 and one record plus the divisional, the championship. They are 18 and one. Also the same record as the Patriots after their 2007 season where they lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl. Never forget. And we'll hop in here. And we were up seven, nothing, but the Jaguars have tied it at seven. And we are up back-to-back -back scores, but Jaguars right back on the board. It's 24-14 now into the second half. Jags making this a very, very close game. Every time we go ahead, the Jags answer right back. But I think they're done answering. 38-28 is your final. Once again, the Lions are Super Bowl champions, officially the team of the decade. And I guess that was the 2030 season, so we really are the team of the decade. We're the only one that have won a Super Bowl in 2030s. So yeah, there's that. Season recap has Kyler Murray winning MVP. Juju Smith-Schuster won Offensive Player of, the, uh, Player of the Year. That's something. Benji Rhodes, Super Bowl MVP. Our defensive end, like that. Players ready to negotiate. Justin Herbert has finally started to regress. Okay, so he's obviously very good. We have Sam Howell, by the way, somehow. Just saw that in the top right. Uh, and Ed Oliver's lost Superstar X Factor again. Pat Conrad has lost Superstar Dev again. Or maybe that's the first time. No, I think it is the first time. Ed Oliver we can bring back for a year. Okay, I don't think I can bring back Justin Herbert. I know that seems crazy. He's just too expensive. I, I would be giving up on the rest of my team. And I think we could be effective without him. So it's a gamble. He's won multiple Super Bowls with us. But just like TJ Hawkinson... I guess you reach age 33 and all of a sudden I'm done with you. Sergio Love lost Superstar. Dude, it's so annoying. I've told them about it. Hopefully it ends up getting fixed. But it is really annoying right now. He's not interested in signing, whatever. Ray Darius Drummond going to test free agency. He was going to be a little bit expensive to bring back anyway. Okay, we'll just see what's going on in free agency, I guess. But uh, it's really frustrating to see some of these guys go to free agency. Is there any way we can bring back Justin Herbert? We could barely afford it. I would need, I would need to get you at a huge discount. I, it would have to be a huge discount. Nope, new team. Yeah, it's just gotta happen. Also, Banks has superstar dev, by the way. So I might just slide him over to play defensive tackle. It's like, not amazing. He's a little bit undersized, isn't a great block shedder, but man, are we gonna be able to put some pressure on the quarterback? Actually, you know what? I've thought about it. I'm definitely going to offer Justin Herbert in a free agency. He'd be a very difficult player to replace. And I just don't have a backup plan in place right now. I haven't drafted a quarterback. At some point, I'm probably going to. I'm not going to be able to rock out with Justin Herbert for the length of the rebuild. He's just not going to last in the league that long. 
But with no teams interested, we might be able to get a steal on him. Old Josh Allen's in here, 35 years old. Leonard Stecker. We saw him, Joe Burrow. Stecker's interesting. 29 has a little bit more interest than some of these other players. Might be the move. All right, I'm going to offer Leonard Stecker a seven-year contract, and I'd like to take the money down a little bit too. It's already pretty affordable for a franchise QB, just, just actually is. But if we can somehow get this guy for super cheap on a seven-year deal, it would absolutely be the move. This corner is also interesting. He's really not even expensive either. Let's see if we can get some steals. I'd love to. Okay, Bucks are going in on Michael Shermer now. Might have to increase my offer a little bit. It's still a pretty good deal overall, though. So I didn't get the corner. Can I get Leonard? Oh, the Browns now. Why, dude? I had such a good contract in place, too. Would have been really good for me. Herbert signed with the Browns. Stecker still out there. I don't have more money to offer him. He's just going to go somewhere else, probably. Didn't get him. I just, I need there to be a sick quarterback in this class, and uh, I don't think we're going to get one. NFL draft time. Of course, we won the Super Bowl, so we don't really pick that high. I went in on the quarterbacks to see where they actually are, and it's not good. Round two to three, true talent. I expected this guy to be faster, to be honest. I don't know what I'm going to do at quarterback. I really don't. The quarterbacks in this class just, they don't seem draftable. Jaron Parker's interesting. A finesse moves with some decent attributes. I mean, good athlete. It's funny, he's got elite speed and he's apparently the ninth fastest left outside linebacker in this class, which is uh, pretty unbelievable to me. If Jaron Parker makes it to 10, I'll consider a move up. He got drafted at number six by, of course, the Vikings. I don't like the draft class. I'm not taking anybody. I'll take the Jets first round pick next year. Draft recap. Uh, CPU drafted us a 75 overall tight end, a 73 overall middle linebacker. He's got hidden dev. Okay. I mean, not the worst thing. It's depth. Those guys aren't going to start, at least not right now. But it's good depth. Maybe they eventually become starters. And the top receiver or top rated player in the class was a receiver, an 80 overall. And Jaron Parker was a 76 that I wanted with Hidden Dev. He's got 86 speed, 77 finesse boost. I mean, definitely a good player. Aiden Hutchinson is starting to regress, by the way. He is 31. Guess not the biggest shock in the world, but he is regressing. We have won three Super Bowls, though. Jamie Sinclair, I mean, it's kind of a shame he's not playing more. This is a really good player, and I just kind of, I guess I upgraded on him, and he's still just sitting here. We don't have a quarterback, but I have two good safeties. That's a it's a Bengal team if ever I've seen one. All right, well, uh, yeah, no no quarterback is going to be tough. <laughs> I got to get one. I can't just play the season without a quarterback. I don't really want to trade Sinclair, though, is the thing. Okay, hold on here. There are actually quarterback options in free agency. Trevor Harrison, 76 overall. I mean, that 97 throw power, he's not really even that bad. And this dude, Gabriel Atkinson, has the QB of the future tag. 99 throw power with the scrambler tag. What? Uh, Sinclair's playing the slot, by the way, so it's not a complete waste. I am going to change my scout, though. That was a good catch. I need to, I need to change my scouts around. We got to be looking at quarterback. Oh, we missed the playoffs with the 94 overall team. That's cool. 9-8. and eight. Did not make the playoffs. 14th ranked offense, 5th ranked defense, and did not make the playoffs. That's just tough. Now, granted, uh, our quarterback was this guy, Trevor Harrison. He was not equipped to be a starting quarterback for us. I'm aware of that. That's on me. That's my mistake. Uh, rushing, Kirk Jackson was great, but they knew what was coming. He had 325 attempts. They shut him down a little bit more. Did have 19 touchdowns. Marquis Glover, big season. Terrence Lockhart, sure. Jameson Williams wasn't really as productive as he has been. Need him back in the slot. But oh my goodness, Benji Rhodes, 19 tackles for loss. Aiden Hutchinson, 18. And then 22 sacks for Hutch, 20 for Rhodes, 20 and a half. Don't want to take that away from him. And then four picks for Conrad, three for Jalen Garns. Uh, we're just a quarterback away, probably. I really, yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> 
What about Justin Herbert? Wow, what an idea. Shoot, why didn't I think of that? And of course, it's an NFC North team winning the Super Bowl. It's the Bears and their Super Bowl MVP, John Johns. Unbelievable. Joe Burrow wins MVP with the Bills. Hutchinson, Defensive Player of the Year. We'll take that. And Kirk Jackson, Offensive Player of the Year. So we got Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year, and we didn't make the playoffs. Oh, that's brutal. This corner, Landry Elam, looks sick. This receiver, Randy Nash, looks sick. Landry Elam, I know, is a stud. If this guy's athletic, I'm going to make it happen. Great to elite speed, I'm going to make it happen. I'm drafting this guy. I don't care what it takes. I am drafting Landry Elam. He's got the names of legendary players. Matt Elam, what a beast he was in the NFL. Dewan Landry, not Laron Landry, Dewan. Perfect combo. George Best, just a fucking soccer player, randomly in here. A legend of Northern Ireland. How do I know that? I've never, I don't watch soccer. Uh, FIFA, yep. Panay Sewell's in here, gotta resign him. Ernie McLeod, I could let go. Hutchinson, finally superstar dev, but is regressing. Jamie Sinclair, I'm bringing back. C Madden's in here. Uh, we can get this done. Uh, Panay Sewell, very expensive. He's gonna test free agency. Um, I might just end up franchise tagging him. It's cheaper than extending him. Hutchinson, I mean, still not that expensive. Maybe a three-year deal is too much. I'll give him a two-year deal, and he is back. Jamie Sinclair, still very good, very affordable. We'll bring him back. Yes, it's a backup strong safety. He played in the slot. He was good, and there's flexibility. I might just play him or somebody at, at linebacker. Kasim Madden is still good. He's 26. He's not that expensive. If he declines, I'll let him go. If not, I would have been happy to bring him back. But, uh, yeah, I think I think this is where we are. Ernie McLeod, I'm just not paying that for a left guard. Just not doing it. I am going to franchise tag Panay Sewell, though. Got to keep him back. Grant Moulds. Okay. All right. I'm interested. Trent McDuffie, Superstar X Factor. Hell yeah. Jalen Hopkins, this is the safety I considered. Not going to sign him now. So we need a quarterback. That much has not changed. Got to give Lockhart superstar dev. Got to give Jamison Williams superstar X Factor. Oh, this freaking game, dude. Okay, how good is Grant Moulds? Ed Oliver's gone. You cannot shed blocks at all. Uh, oh, here we go. Courtney Hood. I need an outside linebacker. He is sick. He's a little older, but should be good for a few years. And he really wants to be a lion. That feels like a really good fit. Also, Derek Vinson. All right, same deal. I would actually, I would prefer him, obviously, but why not both? Por que no los dos? Renzo Douglas actually could play. He could play defensive tackle. He's 6'5", 316. Not much of a pass rusher at all. We'll see if we can get these guys. Giving a lot of money out. We did get Derek Vincent. I'm gonna withdraw on Lorenzo Douglas. Just I don't wanna don't wanna pay that amount of money. We signed Jordan Davis. He is 32 now, but that's actually a pretty decent signing. Uh have not picked up Courtney Hood yet. Do I still want to do this? We have 43 million cap room. We could. I just I'd like to not pay so much money still. Did not get Courtney Hood, but I'm I'm actually okay with that. I didn't really want to shell out way more money. So I'm I'm very comfortable with the way things went. Still looking for that quarterback. Gotta bring in a better QB. But we're I think still in a pretty good spot. I could use an upgrade on the offensive line as well, but Eddie Bolo is just gonna play right guard. It's a little bit better. And we really didn't even need him anyway, but Vincent is just such a great addition to the team. That's like a real, real addition to the team. He is a stud. 90 zone coverage, 90 speed, 92 tackle. Dylan Hartwig here is an interesting option. He's got a few offers right now. Nick Patton, I think we could go after as well. Really, really cheap. And at the very least, is like a good option if we can't bring in a better QB. He's so cheap. So we're going to guarantee that we get him. Mock draft, where is this corner expected to go? Second. But we know for a fact he's going to have a man. 
because his archetype is man to man and he is a zone. So he's going to be sick. Also, this is Randy Nash, aka looks like Randy Moss. Maybe not quite as fast, but whew, this guy looks like he's going to be very good. Not quite Randy Moss, obviously, but Patriots named Randy, receiver. Randy, I think, is 6'4 and not 6'5, but yeah, that, that dude is pretty awesome. But I think Landry here has the potential to be near generational. Elite speed, elite jumping, and elite cover skills make up for, I will guarantee, an 80 overall corner. Guarantee. Vikings at number one. Go with Johnny Bacon as expected. I am going to trade with Seattle. We don't actually have that long of a way to go up. Number eight. I also pick at number 18. Number eight is via... I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. As long as we have this pick, it shouldn't really cost a whole lot to move up. I mean, it's nearly there already. I haven't even offered anything else. I just said, hey, well, can we have this pick? They're like, mm, give us anything at all. And we'll say yes. Fourth rounder and a running back that they want. Boom, there you go. We've moved up to number two. And Seattle, on the verge of reassembling the Legion of Boom, have left me... And un... Oh, hold on a second. Tony Kramer, top five talent at quarterback. Very, very, very fast with elite throw power. Oh my goodness, dude. Why did he have to be here? I need him though. We're going to actually take Tony Kramer. 93 speed, 94 throw power, 91 change of direction, 90 acceleration, 87 agility. Uh, yeah, that was the right move. But I'm moving back up to number three and uh, I'm taking the corner. Trading a first, number 18, a third, number 82, and a second round pick next year for number three. Uh, I'm so lucky I decided to make that quarterback a focus player because I was really not even considering him, but I'm like, I need a quarterback. I'll scout all three of the uh, QBs. Clearly, there's a big discrepancy. Round two to three talent, round one to two talent, which is pretty good for a QB. But yeah, top five is different. And then Landry Elam is going to be obviously fan Fantastic. Hidden Dev, not a surprise. And uh, he's also got the Cameron Ford uh, face model from Lions Franchise, the sick corner out of Virginia Tech that I took at number two overall. And I think season, season three of Lions Franchise, season two or three, he was awesome. I'm getting the same vibes. 95 speed, 92 jumping, 88 change of direction, 92 acceleration, 91 agility, and we know the skills are amazing. We just took two arguable, arguable generational players in the same draft, back to back. Unbelievable. Is linebacker elite speed with uh, A awareness, B tackle? I think could pre be pretty good. 90 speed, hidden dev. I know we don't exactly need linebacker right now. But that's a really good player to have in the future. And I took him at, what, the back end of the second round? Middle of the second round? Not bad. And he's a 72 overall. But what I'm really looking at, Tony Kramer is a 78, which is awesome. For a quarterback, that's a really, really good overall. And the fact that he is unbelievable as a runner and then elite arm, still working on the accuracy, He's going to be great. He will start, even though I signed that quarterback. And then Landry Elam, no surprise, is an 82 overall. Not sure he's generational. Could be, but 95 speed, 83 man, 81 zone. He is very good. Oh my God, Randy Nash is an 83. I said he was sick. Only has 89 speed. 99 spectacular catch. All right, well, yeah, it's pretty good. And <laughs> that's he's, It should be a 99. It's a 98 right now, playing down. 99 spectacular catch. I I would have I had no way of knowing he had that. 99 spectacular catch is uh, pretty sick. I would say he is borderline generational. At the very least, he's one of those high tier generated players, or he has a high tier generator to 99 spec catch. Does have superstar X factor. Limits the chances of me having superstar X factor. If I had to bet now, I would say the corner has star, and the quarterback does have superstar X-Factor. That's my guess. Yeah, so Kramer's going to start without question. Uh, team looks pretty good. Defensively, I'd love to get Elam on the field. Conrad, by the way, is up to superstar X-Factor as well. We'll do a hybrid for him. Really good player. I'm just, uh, I'm trying to think. 
Is there any way I can get that corner on the field at CB2? I don't think so. He's just not high enough overall. So what I'm going to opt to do is just throw him at nickel corner. He will start in the nickel over Sinclair. Sinclair, I, I got to do something with him eventually. I don't know when that's going to be. I'm, I'm holding on to him. I think maybe Herrick can move to linebacker, but we have depth there. No one's moving. We just have good depth. It, it's just fine. Like in, in dime packages, we're going to be sick. That's just it. And we go 13 and 4. Our rookie quarterback balling out. We have the sixth best offense, the best defense in terms of scoring. Show me superstar X Factor for the quarterback. Star. Wow. That is really not something I expected. He's just sick. He's not generational. He's not unbelievable. He's just really good. He's an 83 as a rookie playing up to an 85. Really, I, I was I was so sure that he was going to have superstar X Factor. And then defensively, Elam does have star. I was right about that. He's still a beast. Just, uh, man, <laughs> how do we miss out on the superstar X Factor when we took, I mean, two studs? What are the odds? Cowboys in the wild card. I didn't even check out stats on the season. Uh, it doesn't matter because we were out of the playoffs already. Rookie year for Tony Kramer went pretty well. Kirk Jackson was awesome. Those are really good numbers. Uh, receiving, I mean, the ball distribution is kind of crazy, but individual numbers are not bad. Kirk Jackson had 10 receiving touchdowns. Okay. Very interesting numbers. Montreal Banks, 24 tackles for loss, 21 for Benji Road to a 20 sacks. So did Aiden Hutchinson. We're really getting to the quarterback here. Derek Vincent with a few interceptions as well. Landry Elam, the rookie, snagged one. Not going to win defensive rookie of the year, though. But very good numbers uh, for the defense. Offense, very weird numbers. Falcons won the Super Bowl. NFL MVP is Chiefs quarterback, Glenn Sears. Glenn Sears. Not a, not Patrick Mahomes. I don't know where he is nowadays. Uh, Kirk Jackson, Offensive Player of the Year. Go Lions. Benji Rhodes, Defensive Player of the Year. Go Lions. Tony Kramer, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Go Lions. It would be so sick if you could offer contract extensions to guys without expiring contracts, because let me tell you, I would love so badly to extend my rookie quarterback right now while he's still cheap. I'd, I'd love it so much. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way in Madden. In real life, you could do it. Got a lot of players to bring back. Jamison Williams, there's no way you expect me to pay you 32 mil and when you're 35, 36 years old, like, no. Do I just have to let Jamison Williams walk? I don't want to do that. I'm going to have to franchise tag him probably. Jalen Garns, though, I will pay money to because he is 26 years old. Very good corner. And he's not interested in signing. Okay. Terrence Lockhart, of course, back down to superstar or from superstar to star. Um, do I want him on the team? Yeah. Oh, Barry Butler, super cheap. Yeah, welcome back. Chad Smiley, I think I'm going to let him walk. Unless he's super cheap, which he he kind of is. All right. He's going to test free agency, though. Okay, so I'm going to franchise tag Jalen Garns for 20 mil. He's only 26 years old. I'm not letting him test free agency. The interest is going to be crazy. Uh, Panay Sewell still does not want to be a Lion, but I still would like him to be a Lion. I can't franchise tag him. Can't franchise tag Jamison Williams. So I'm okay with him testing free agency though, because he's old. I'm not sure what the interest is going to be. Sewell has zero teams interested. Jamison Williams has zero teams interested. And historic championships for the Lions. Now he has super big interest because we've won championships in this video. We've got like three or something now. We're going to offer Jamison Williams a contract. I think that should be good enough to sign him. All right, where has Patrick Mahomes been? I'm curious because he... He wasn't just on that Chiefs team. He played on the Commanders. Also, Patrick Mahomes surely has broken the record for uh, passing touchdowns and receive, or, and passing yards in a career. I'm starting to misspeak. It's 3.30 in the morning. I'm starting to struggle a little bit. We're going to pick this up tomorrow for sure. But NFL records, Tom Brady actually is number one. That's not a big surprise. I just thought Patrick Mahomes would be closer at this point. He's got 67K, which is really good. But uh, not quite there. Mahomes at 550. Still a long way to go to, uh, to catch Tom Brady. You got to play till you're 50. We did get Jamison Williams. 
Still the only team offering on Panay Sewell. Dude, just sign the contract. He doesn't want to. Kramer, of course, is up to superstar dev. That'll happen when you win Offensive Rookie of the Year. He'll go up to an 86 with morale, nearly up to an 87 as well. Yeah, really, really good team. Happy with where things are. And we don't just have a secret linebacker there. It's Aiden Hutchinson back at a, a right outside linebacker, despite being our starting right end. Team looks really good. Corners are awesome. I'd love for Elam to play more, but unfortunately, there's just no spot for him right now. We've got great depth. We've got great players. We have money. Once we bring back Panay Sewell, we're going to be in a really good spot. And um, maybe a backup running back. I think we have a good backup tight end. It's really just, again, like best player available. We could use an edge to take the place of Hutchinson, but we have banks we can just slide over. So by that logic, we could use a defensive tackle. But again, it just kind of depends what's in the class. Panay Sewell has signed with the Lions. It's a huge contract. I probably gave him a little bit too much money. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, Larry Brothers looks sick, by the way. Running back, great speed, great strength, elite jumping, change of directions only okay. Uh, he's not like elite side to side, but uh, is a really good looking power back. I probably wouldn't consider drafting him just because we don't need that, especially not inside the top five. This defensive tackle, Andrew Davis, is interesting. Run stopper type with a finesse moves and is a sick athlete. He looks like he might be amazing. That's a defensive tackle for me down the board a little bit. So we pick at number 24 overall. This is probably the last draft before we do uh, kind of a longer sim and then catch up and kind of rebuild because we've built a pretty unstoppable force at this moment. This running back still, I mean, he can't juke at all, but is a good power back and he's so fast. It's like, it's so tempting, but I, I just got to not do that. Is this where I finally take a guard? Hmm maybe back end of the first round here is there anything i want to take okay broncos offering me a second round pick just to move down a little bit i'm gonna do that there's no player that i absolutely have to take with this pick there is a defensive tackle that does look pretty good but i'm gonna pass on him if i can get a first round pick in the future just take it from kansas city not even think twice about it and then with that pick at the back end of the second round i'm gonna take the defensive tackle that i liked Run stopper archetype with a finesse moves. Surely going to end up being a pretty good player because we know his block shed will most likely be a B, even though the range is B to D. It'd be so weird to have his archetype be run stopper if he can't stop the run. Andrew Davis, welcome to the team. Does have hidden dev, 88 strength, 80 speed. We've seen this build of a defensive tackle a lot during this rebuild, and I've been taking them a lot because I think there's pretty good value with that type of a player. Speed rush, defensive tackle, strong and fast, I'm in. He's a 72 overall. It's not amazing, but it's okay. I'm interested to see what that running back looks like because laterally, bad. But he's like, you know, Leonard Fournette, which could be pretty sick. He's a 78 overall, was the highest overall of any player in the class. 93 speed, juke and spin move are sub 80, which isn't great. Change of direction is an 80. Not great, but he is just a, a big power back. 90 stiff arm as well. So the team looks very, very good. I mean, you guys have seen it. Really hasn't changed too much except for the addition of this awesome quarterback, our QB of the future, without question. And I'm going to let the CPU take the reins. Usually what I do uh, during these is at some point when the team is just too good, we'll simulate for, you know, five years or so, and then I'll take back over when the team is a little bit less good. We'll evaluate what happened in the past. So we'll see if this Lions team gets some more Super Bowl wins. And yeah, I'll catch in or catch up with you guys in like 2038, maybe. As you can tell from my uh, fluorescent hoodie now, the next day is here. Time has passed and time has passed in the game as well. It's 2039. We're in the playoffs and the team is very, very, very different. With the exception of a few players, the team is almost totally new. So we do have the quarterback, Tom, uh, Tony Kramer, not Tommy Kramer, Tony Kramer. What up, Tone? 5'11", 28 years old now, but has 97 throw power, 95 speed. Accuracy, except for deep, is amazing. I don't think there's any way to upgrade play action so it's kind of is what it is when you draft them. 
or maybe it goes up like one or two over time. But he's a 99 overall, and his play action's only a 70. And also deep accuracy is not very good. Vincent is still here. Conrad is down to an 80 overall, playing up to an 81. Garnes is still here. Elam is still here. But we've lost a number of our best players. Henry's still here. Remember, we signed him. But our free safety is Chance Ross, only 26 years old. But you guys have missed a little bit of time. We'll see what happens year by year uh, once we finish this season. But the team is extremely different. There are some similar names. I think we drafted James, right? He was in one of the last drafts. Dennis James, 28 years old. Still looks very solid and really isn't even playing a whole lot. We go into stats and awards here. We can go ahead and see via the legacy leaderboard that, I mean, we can just see each individual position. Joe Burrow is in the Hall of Fame now. Thurman is the number two all time. You can see we have four Super Bowls and uh, four NFC championships as well. Trevor Lawrence with the Texans. The third most legacy of all time for a quarterback. Herbert, Mahomes. There's Taylor with the Seahawks. Don't even know him. There's Tom Brady. Turner with the Commanders. Don't know him. Don't know a lot of these names. We, I remember Justin Sherman, Mac Jones. I remember Leonard Stecker. He's still in the NFL. I think he actually led the league in passing yards this year. But some very interesting names. I mean, Jalen Hurts is a Hall of Famer. Jonathan Taylor has the highest legacy score of all time for a running back. Christian McCaffrey. There's our boy, Kirk Jackson. Kirk Jackson must have just recently retired. He was the guy we drafted in season one. Generational running back and had a very good career. Obviously, some recognizable names in here, including Brothers, the uh, big-time running back, the power back that just wasn't very good laterally. You can see Chris Godwin, number one receiver all time, and then Massey. I vaguely remember him, Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs, Stevenson with the Bills, Rondo Moore, Jalen Waddell. There's Jamison Williams in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer Jamison Williams is pretty cool. Don't really see anything else super worth noting. A tight end, TJ Hawkinson is number one, of course, won the two Super Bowls with us. And not too much to report otherwise. There's McLeod with the Steelers, the number one left guard of all time. He, of course, was our left guard for at least a little while. Ash was on our team as well. Who is this? Taylor Ash. He was for sure on our team, right? I think without question. We can just check. Yeah, Detroit for the first four years of his career. And I guess the CPU felt no need to re-sign him. Or maybe I didn't. But I think I would have. The number one left end of all time is number one by a lot. It's Benji Rhodes. Lions legend. But he has retired now. Defensive tackle. M Green. Is this mean Joe? It isn't. But <laughs> it might as well be. Also, Armstrong has the highest legacy score by a billion. 23 yearly awards. That's unbelievable. And here is Montreal Banks who we drafted. I'm going to trade for him. For sure. Want him back. He is 30, but maybe that makes him a little bit more acquirable. Got to remember to trade for him. He's on the Seahawks. There's Vincent at outside linebacker. But, you know, a lot of familiar names and, of course, some unfamiliar ones as well. But I feel like, you know, we knew a lot about the guys in the league. There's Henry there at number eight. Uh, you know, even the created players, of course. Trey White was on the Lions for a minute. Zach Rushing was the Vikings corner. There's Garns, of course, still on our team, thankfully. Dude, Pat Conrad is the number two free safety of all time. And was Killings the free safety that we drafted? Was he? No, I don't... Uh, did we? I remember the name for some reason. He wasn't the safety that we drafted in year one. Is that guy going to be on this list anywhere? I honestly, I can't remember his name. So that's kind of a problem. And strong safety's Herrick was our strong safety for a while. Joshua Herrick, I want to say. He's number three strong safety of all time. For NFL records, Joe Burrow has the most passing yards and passing touchdowns. You can see the list um, if you just pause it. Jonathan Taylor, most rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. I just, I do want to show our guy Kirk Jackson there. Is at least in that top list. Receiving yards is still Jerry Rice. Any Lions in here? Jamison Williams cracks the top 10. Receiving touchdowns, of course, still Jerry Rice. 
no Jamison Williams catches is still Jerry Rice. That just goes to show you how crazy his career was. And then for sacks, Benji Rhodes is the most by a lot, 247. I guess Armstrong is fairly close. And at defensive tackle, that is unbelievable. You just don't, you don't get enough interceptions in simulation ever for anybody to even potentially crack the top 10 or the top 20. You might have a corner that's a 99 overall that plays 20 years and they might finish with 20 interceptions. So kind of tough, but we'll see if we can win our fifth Super Bowl. Nope, not this season. Loss to the Bucks, and we are off to the off season. 2039, that sets up the 2040 draft. And uh, then we only have a few more seasons to go. We're in the home stretch, but we'll do the recaps and the seasons we missed as well. Bills beat the Bucks in the Super Bowl. Leonard Stecker is your Super Bowl MVP. Glenn Sears, NFL MVP with the Bengals. Remember, no Joe Burrow. 2038, we had the Patriots beating the Rams in the Super Bowl. You guys can see the names on the side. I'm just really looking for some of those lines. Not seeing any Patriots with another Super Bowl. And James Bean was your NFL MVP. And there's Anthony Armstrong, Defensive Player of the Year. It seems like the best defensive tackle of all time. Joe Burrow, MVP with the Bills as the Rams beat the Jags in the Super Bowl. And Justin Herbert in 2036 has won a Super Bowl with the Rams, win Super Bowl MVP. Bills over the Seahawks here. Joe Burrow, Super Bowl MVP as Robbie Taylor won NFL MVP and another Defensive Player of the Year for Anthony Armstrong. Joe Burrow with another MVP as the Eagles beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl. Their quarterback was Justin Sherman. And then 2033 is the season we just missed. Benji Rhodes, Defensive Player of the Year and Super Bowl MVP, of course, of the Super Bowl champion, Detroit Lions. And then 2032, I remember, this is where the Falcons beat the Broncos. Have $136 million in available salary cap. And we do have a few players to bring back. Damian Osgood is only 25 years old at left tackle. He's going to be a priority for me. Jorge Morales can walk. Don't really need Brandon Evans. Sherrod Grimes, we might bring back. Oh, it's unavailable. Did the CPU do this for me? Why did they do that? I'm going to franchise tag Damian Osgood. I guess it hasn't registered that I'm back on the game, back in control. Well, actually what it is, is that when we, when these were on auto, they just took care of it during the season. And I just came back. So that actually makes sense. Those were already negotiated before the end of the season there, which is okay. We franchise tagged our left tackle, probably will extend him at some point next season. So going into free agency, we could use an upgrade across the defensive line, really end end tackle. But I do want to play, or I do want to trade for that, you know, former guy that we drafted. We need receiver as well. Draft still remains an option for a lot of these different positions. So Raheem Brooks is going to be a really good fit for us either way. He's actually not super expensive for a 95 overall at 29 years old. A little bit strange. Definitely going to go after him. He could definitely play defensive tackle for us, for sure. And Mike Waller could be the one. 25-year-old receiver, already a 91 overall. Only star dev, but I don't care. Big upgrade at the position. We'll offer him a contract. So I've targeted a defensive end, a receiver, a corner, and then a kicker and a punter. Probably could have waited on the kicker and punter. But we'll see if we can get some steals. So two players have signed on. Paul Lowry and the kicker, Quentin Blythe. Now, does that mean, who did I miss out on? The receiver. The receiver went elsewhere. That's frustrating. Mike Waller, not Mike Wallace, but going to the Steelers regardless. And we got Raikeem Brooks and the kicker or punter as well. So we missed out on the wide receiver. That's okay because the team has got better. So I've moved Brooks over to defensive tackle. He's just a better fit for the team there. Still not strong in the defensive line because Sewell is not very good. So we're going to go ahead and make a trade for Alliance franchise legend at this point, Montrell Banks. How do I get him? They need a middle linebacker. Well, you are in luck because I have some good backups. I will give you, would I rather give them Ruben Kennedy or Antonio Baptiste? 25 versus 30. 86 overall versus 80. I'll give him Ruben Kennedy if his value would be higher. Let's see if it is. It is. So Kennedy's going to be the one to go. Okay. So it's going to have to be a multi-step process in order to do what I want here. It's going to have to be a few trades because they have interest in Jorge Morales, 
who's bad, by the way. He's just because he's so old. I don't know why they would want him. I'll need to somehow, like, trade up into the first round in order to make this happen. But we did get that first round pick. For Williamson, who's a starting caliber receiver, Morales, who I guess is a starting caliber guard, but not on my team, and a third round pick. And what I'd like to be able to do is get a higher first round pick so that the Seahawks see more value. So Victor Graham will be the one to go. Do I have depth on the O-line I can trade? Kind of, but also no. Bryce Griffin maybe could play right tackle for me, so I don't really want to trade him. Oh, okay. Just Did I, did I add a first round pick in there? It might have been. All right, well, we move up to 16 at least. Probably didn't move up enough. Trading another receiver, backup left guard, and a first number 22 for a first number 13. So we're doing a decent job moving up here, but I do see some holes in the team now, especially because we're, we're trading some of our depth. So it's going to be important to look at some of these options still here on the offensive line because one of these guys might have to be a starter. So I'm looking at left guard for sure. Okay, this center has got to be a priority. And we got Chris Madrano just like that. 28 years old superstar dev center. Like, that was a no-brainer. Okay, trading uh, first this year and next year for the number two overall pick. And then I think we can use that number two overall pick to get crazy during the actual draft. So I'm not going to do anything except for simulate right there. I'll stop and do a little bit of scouting, of course. Hopefully the draft class is good because I can still draft somebody. I'm not dead set on just trading for a player and that's it. Oh, I've already looked at this. I looked at this last night. So I do have some favorites. I guess I added two. Roosevelt Stamper looks very good. And then Tyler Day also looks like a very quality uh, corner. Is he a big athlete though? Yeah, he is a really, really good athlete. So if I need corner... Uh, or potentially even safety with that A zone, but probably probably corner. Tyler Day is the pick, but Roosevelt Stamper down the board. Tackling's not great, but B block should be finesse moves. A power moves could definitely be a very solid selection. And Stephen Hankins, one of the smartest men of all time. Yep, that's his name. Um, is interesting. Great speed. A break tackle, A carrying, A catch in traffic. He's very good, except route running deep is not good the rest i would say is very very solid i, I mean we might draft him adam mizzou is this doriel green beckham dgb is still i'll say it i mean he's one of the if not the best college receivers i've ever seen doriel green beckham early on at mizzou was unstoppable like it's so crazy like the the like the dominant college football receivers that just never work out in the league but for you know one reason or another, it just doesn't happen sometimes. And there, there are so many that were just like dominant college receivers. Justin Blackman, obviously, uh, if you know Justin Blackman, a lot of his problem was mental. Josh Gordon, kind of same thing, uh, similar along those same lines. Doriel Green Beckham, as I mentioned. Laquan Treadwell, pre-injury at Ole Miss, is still one of the best college receivers I've watched. He was unbelievable, man. Uh, in the early 2010s, but injury, I think, really hurt him. He was just never the same player after that. NFL draft time. Ravens have the number one overall pick, but I want the number one overall pick. So do I make a move for this? Uh, trading number 54 and a four to move up to 33. And I'm going to use that Ravens pick to trade it back to them in order to move up to number one without trading number two. So there's a lot going on here. But they just had the top pick in the second round. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to trade a second round pick, I want the one with the most value. And I'm actually getting rid of a big time Lions legend here at this point. Jalen Garns, superstar X Factor, really good player. The problem is he is 33 years old. And I don't even know if he's going to play out, you know, the, after this next season. So he's unfortunately got to be traded. So it's going to be Garns, a second this year, a second next year for the number one overall pick. Yeah, kind of interesting, right? But it's worth having. So a way this could go is I could come away in the draft with this receiver who is actually pretty sick and honestly reminds me of DGB. I kind of want to do that. And I think I might do that at number two. So I'm trading the number one overall pick, uh, a three next year and a seven next this year for the number three pick and a second next year. So it's basically just moving down 
I guess, two spots, but we still own the next pick. Uh, and picking up a second from a third next year. The left guard goes at number one overall. Let's see here. I'm curious how long the receiver and the corner would stay on the board. So I'm a little bit hesitant to trade here because I want both the corner and the receiver. So it's like, what would I rather have? Would I rather have the corner and the receiver and then maybe not be able to get the former lion stud? I'm a little bit conflicted, I would say. I think we're going to take them back to back and we're just going to find a way. We'll find a way. Steven Hankins. Normal dev. It really is Doriel Green Beckham, dude. He's got 93 speed, 95 jumping, 92 change of direction. I think he's going to be pretty highly rated. We know he's a top five player in the class. Just obviously, you know, not ideal to see normal development. You're drafting a receiver at number two overall, especially the Lions. You know, you want Calvin Johnson and not Charles Rogers. And then at number three overall, where's this corner going to go? Is he going to go next? Bolts, Jags, Bills. Where are they? I'm just not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to take the corner here. And again, we're going to figure out how to get that defensive tackle that is really going to be a defensive end for me. And we drafted him as a defensive end. So we're taking the corner. Tyler Day, I'm not sure that he's generational. I don't think he is, but I know he's going to be very good. B-man, B-press, A-zone, elite athlete. No brainer. Hidden Dev, 95 speed. Love to see it. Amazing acceleration and agility. I think it was the right pick. Wake Forest corner. Is this Kevin Johnson? Maybe. All right, Operation Montreal Banks to Detroit is in full swing. So Ruben Kennedy, still about the same interest as before, but we add the number 13 overall pick. Please be close. It's not going to be close enough because adding a second round pick next year, I don't think is going to be enough to move the needle. It's not. It's got to be another first rounder probably. But the question becomes, how do I get another first rounder? Don't really want to trade a receiver. Oh, I still have Bryce Griffin. That's right. Oh, the green interest? He's not going to be enough. Trading Bryce Griffin and a second for a first this year from the Steelers. This could be enough to make it go through. It could be because I'm obviously very willing to part with number 13. So willing. Now, I don't really have any picks next year after doing this, but it's worth it. Two ones, and Ruben Kennedy gets me Montreal Banks, who, of course, will move over to left end. And then our team is pretty awesome. We don't pick until the fifth round now, and that's pretty much true of the next year's draft as well. But once again, we're kind of going all out to win a Super Bowl again. And if we could win five here in a 20-year span, I'd be really happy with that. Four is already pretty good. Okay, so Stephen Hankins is a 75. A little underwhelming, honestly. I saw a top five in the class and I go, all right, well, we know the corner's pretty good. Might be a pretty good draft class. He's a 79 overall and probably the highest rated player in the class. Uh, much more suited to be a zone corner than a man corner, but isn't like the worst well-rounded. Like he's still pretty versatile, can do a few different things. And let's see, is he indeed the highest player in the class overall? Uh, yeah, by a lot. It really isn't even close. And there are a number of receivers that are 70. Six overall, two of them, 175. And of course, we took a 75 overall receiver and there are like a million 75 overall receivers. So uh, unlucky, unlucky there for sure. Oh, uh, also, I guess his development trade is revealed. Is that with the managed staff thing? Is that what's going on? Yep, it is. And as you can see, I can't click it. So we only drafted one guy with hidden dev. I guess we didn't really have any picks. So they just said, this guy's dev trait's going to be revealed. Well, I'm not complaining when it's Superstar X Factor. I'll tell you that. So Stephen Hankins will be in the slot on offense. And the slot on defense will be the rookie Tyler Day with Superstar X Factor. I think we could have a good thing going here. I mean, Stephen Hankins really needs to get um, offense rookie of the year and get star dev at least. And then it'll be a lot more usable. But right now, a little bit disappointed. 13 and 4 big time season. I'd say that's pretty good. Stats and awards here. Don't see my quarterback anywhere in there. But uh, Tony Kramer, I mean, it's crazy that 4,600 passing yards is what, is it, what did I say? 26th in the league? 21st? That's ridiculous. <laughs> they got to fix that. They're not going to. 37 touchdowns, 8 picks. Great. Lonnie Presley averaged 4 per carry, 17 touchdowns. He had a lot of touches. 
receiving. Dexter Autry led her team in yards as well as touchdowns. Where is Hankins? Did he just not play that much? I guess slot receiver is not super involved in this Carolina playbook that we're still in. Is what it is. Uh, 14 tackles for loss for Raheem Brooks and Gabe Sewell, who also had 11 sacks. Montrell Banks with 21 of them. 13 and a half for Raheem Brooks. Really good production from the defensive line. And the secondary seemed to haul in a, you know, quite a few interceptions as well. So we're not going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but I don't care as long as we can win the Super Bowl and we're out in the first round. All right, offseason time. Can't wait. That's the best part of this anyway. You think I care about a Super Bowl? I'm ready to draft. I'm ready for free agency. We got some money. Let's go. Let's, that's way better anyway. Bucks beat the Bills in the Super Bowl. Battle of the Bees. Mason Devine with the Chiefs wins MVP. Chiefs playbook is pretty good for producing MVP winning quarterbacks. And yeah, no, actually Lions Offensive Player of the Year, Lonnie Presley, our running back. Okay. He might go up to superstar X Factor. And I might be tempted to stay in Carolina playbook as a result. Okay, so tone it, dude, these dev traits. I'm so sick of it. I have so much money to resign my guys, and that's because these players are so expensive. I'm, I'm going to backload this. Tony Kramer, he has no real interest in the team, which means I'm going to have to overpay a little bit. But it's what I have to do to keep him, so we'll offer him. And he's back. Montreal Banks is back as well. Those were the two big ones. Uh, obviously, we want to keep some of this talent as well. Landry Elam, remember we traded up for him. He's a little bit expensive, but... Still good. Chance Ross back as well. We're just bringing everybody back. We have so much money that, I mean, we'd be stupid not to, but it's like, it's my whole team, dude. It's so many starters. Okay, so now the question becomes, do I need any of these guys? Buchanan, no. Kirkland, maybe. Baptiste, maybe. All right, so Kirkland is a starter. Yeah, we need him back for sure. Who is the other one? Baptiste. If he's like five mil or under a year, I'll do it. Oh, Baptiste is literally nothing. Okay, yeah, definite extension then. Test free agency. I just gave you way more than you even wanted. All right, we had 30 mil though. I'm just looking for a backup middle linebacker. Probably can find one in the draft. I don't even need a high pick to make it happen. A lot of good players in free agency. I don't think there's any real players anymore. And look who it is. The 39-year-old Will Thurman, of course. Dude, Dennis Williamson out of Tennessee. A six foot three corner, 25 years old. Dude. I'm, I'm in. I know it's not the biggest need, but you know what they say, can never have too many good corners. That actually is, that is a saying. So look at the Bucks. Sean Murphy bunting, like weird broken arm. Richard Sherman ended up taking snaps for the Bucks in the year 2021 of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ridiculous. I did get the corner, Dennis Williamson. Okay. He's just really good. 6'3", 195, only 25 years old, superstar dev. Wow, zone coverage is a problem. Good thing he's not playing safety. He'll be fine. When in reality, zone coverage is very much a large part of being an NFL corner. Don't worry about it. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Draft time. And we're going to have no money next year and the year after. All right, we don't pick until the fourth round. So I ain't doing it. 2041. Wow. All right, draft recap. Let's see what we missed out on. Anything good? Do we draft anybody good? Not really, but that's okay. It's not about that at this point. Draft was very bad. Didn't miss anything. So my corners are just sick now. The thing is, one of them can be trade bait. Perfectly fine. Still looking for a big time uh, receiver. And I think this dude also had star or superstar dev that they took away. I'm just sick of it happening. Yep, he did have superstar. The bird is the word, Nicholas Bird. And all of my receivers have expiring contracts, by the way, except for the one that I just drafted. Not good. 13 and four, first round bye for the Lions. Like to see it. Our offense, 24th in terms of yards. Okay, that's interesting that we went 13 and four. Tommy, I keep calling him Tommy Kramer, out of habit. Uh, Tony Kramer was not very good. Our running back, Lonnie Presley, was pretty good, though, receiving... You know, not very big time numbers there. I think it's a combination of the playbook, plus also we don't have the receivers. Montreal Banks, though, great season, even with only 13 and a half sacks in Sim. That's a great number in real life, by the way, but in Sim, it's like not amazing. But 26 TFLs, you love. A lot of interceptions for the team. Can never have too many corners. So first round by at 13 and four. 
means we will be going straight to the divisional where, hopefully not the Cowboys, the Seattle Seahawks stand in our way. Also, it's giving us a blizzard notification. However, those of you who are bigger NFL fans, maybe you're from Detroit, maybe you know, uh, the Lions play in a dome. So if we're the home team here, which we are, how could we possibly, also it says Lions Field, even though it's Ford Field. Is it not Ford Field anymore? Feels like it's still Ford Field. The forecast is calling for blizzard-like conditions. We play in a dome. And that we got our player here, Derek Vincent, giving our team a prep or a pep talk in the locker room. The surface is going to be slow. The footing is going to be rough. We're going to have to play fundamentally sound football all around to win this game. We are in a dome. We play in a dome. There is no weather. All right, let's see how this blizzard ends up going. We win. That's all I care about. <laughs> There's a blizzard in a dome. What, do they have a snow machine? I don't know what's going on. Super Bowl time. Beat the 86 overall Eagles. Please, please do not lose to this team. Yes, Lions, Titans, Super Bowl, and hopefully we will come away with our fifth. We are down in the game right now, and we take the lead 14 to 10, 21 to 10 now, but the Titans still fighting back. This is the Super Bowl after all, but it's 28 17, 28 25 Lions. We extend the lead to 10, 42 25 now, and that should be all she wrote. 49 31 is your final. The Lions are once again Super Bowl champions. We've done it with a few different quarterbacks. Justin Herbert. Uh, I think I think somebody else after Justin Herbert, too. Maybe it was this guy. Maybe it was. Either way, it works out. We allowed 416 passing yards, but Tony Kramer, even though he was sub-250, had four touchdowns. Good game. Super Bowl win. Lonnie Presley was your MVP and also won Offensive Player of the Year. Paul Grubbs with the Rams, NFL MVP. Players ready to renegotiate. Vincent's got to go. Too old. Dennis James, we might let walk. Dexter Autry, I probably want to bring back. Gabe Sewell, I might want to bring back. I don't know. It's kind of a tough call on some of these guys. We got Dexter Autry back, though. Good to have our best receiver. Uh, I think, what do we want to do here? I don't really have a ton of money. I'm going to save it. So we do need help at linebacker. I swear. Stop changing the dev trait. Stupid game. Okay, so we're, we're really in the uh, tail end here. I need linebacker. I still need pass rusher somehow. I can trade for one though, is the thing. Could definitely trade for one. Otis Stevenson. I feel like I vaguely remember. We would be... We would be good for a year with him. Or two. We did not get him. Cordell Porters is so cheap, and he's actually really good. Only 26 years old. I, I say only. It's not like that's super young in Madden, but it's young enough. So he'll he'll end up developing pretty well. And Cordell Portis has signed. Really good value. Still could potentially use a linebacker and a pass rusher. I know I have another corner to trade. I do. It's good to have a few good ones. I could use a receiver too. Last pick of the first round. Don't actually love the draft class, so... I'm going to look to get better via trade, and this is where one of these corner uh, corners can come in huge. It's going to be Paul Lowry or Landry Elam on the trade block. Probably Landry Elam. He never got up to superstar dev. He was a really good draft pick, but unfortunately, the tough truth is that he was just never that guy. He was very good, still is. Like, he's a higher overall. Maybe I'm being a little bit too tough on him. Ben Vallejo could be the guy. 25 years old. Superstar X Factor. Is there any way I can trade for him? They want a corner. So this actually could be a really good fit. Trade declined. It would put us over the cap, but they would do it. Okay, big trade. I cleared up some cap space and got it done. And that's actually why I'm including Beltron in this trade. I'm taking on the contract of a receiver too, Cameron Weathersby. But Brian Vallejo is the big part. He is lower overall than... I'm, I'm trading the wrong receiver. I traded the wrong receiver. Uh, or the wrong corner. Okay, that was a mistake. And uh, Vallejo, of course, I got to play left end. I'm a little bit annoyed at what just happened. I really am. <laughs> okay, I'm just trading Elon, or Elam back, 
or uh, swapping for day. So the trade ends up being exactly what I wanted it to be. Okay, I'm looking for one more linebacker and uh, our team will essentially be done. I'd like them to not be in their 30s, ideally. Trading a one and a two for another linebacker and a receiver as well. That fits pretty well. Uh, my team is thinning out a little bit, so I think it's important to, to get some depth back. It's going to be tough to pay all these guys. We still have a little bit of wiggle room, but not a whole lot. Draft had some decent players. Nothing crazy. Presley looking pretty good. I mean, our team overall looks real solid. So I think we're going to be in a really good spot. I think I'd probably move Hankins down. Just has less potential with that normal development. But this is the final year. We are in 2042. Our team is fantastic. It's just time for them to go out and uh play well first round by two team wow oh my goodness look at the standings nfc north 14 and 3 lions 14 and 3 vikings 13 and 4 packers you will never see that in the nfl that would be absolutely unbelievable it seems like the only games that each team in this division lost was probably in the division except for the bears who were not that good tony kramer had a good enough year and lonnie presley had a career year over five per carry with 23 touchdowns and 1600 yards amazing Still nothing crazy from our receivers, but again, it's I think it's a product of our playbook. Look at our pressure, though. 24 and a half sacks for Montrell Banks, 16 for Ben Vallejo, who we, who we picked up, 10 for Raheem Brooks, 9 and a half for Andrew Davis, 4 picks for Dennis Williamson. I would like to see that. See if we can beat the Packers. No, we don't, and that is the video. 20-year rebuild of the Detroit Lions. I think we won five Super Bowls. Had a number of really, really good seasons. Uh, and this is one of the best teams that we've had here. 96 overall. Of course, some morale is impacting that. Uh, would be a little bit higher if, as the Packers win the Super Bowl, uh, would be a little bit higher if we continue to play in the playoffs. Who is this, by the way? Brett Miller. Random superstar X-Factor running back. Okay. Did the CPU draft him? How did I get that guy? I have no idea. They keep changing my dev traits. Very annoying. Uh, but this is the final team. Pretty awesome team. Ross should have superstar. Harold should have superstar. Anyway, awesome team. A lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. Follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Bengal YouTube. And of course, uh, yeah, I mean, I have so many links down in the description. I have a second channel where I do MLB The Show franchise. I have a third channel where I do GeoGuessr and other games like Assassin's Creed. If you're interested in any of that, live streams on Twitch, it's all down in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.